of Soul, and the direction of the general, Richard Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the field, the Warriors of Bacon College. The Warriors are led by head coach Lawrence Livingston. Gentlemen, your Texas Southern University Tigers, led by head coach Carol Asbury. Bacon Warriors have won the toss and will receive the opening kickoff. Houston, Texas, at BBVA Compass Stadium, this is Tiger Football. Oh. 
The Tigers are back in action tonight at BBVA Compass Stadium, a non-conference matchup on a humid overcast night in Houston. The Bacon College Warriors will take on the TSU Tigers. And welcome to our broadcast location with Butch also know it. I'm Brett Dola. Nick Strong will be along in a moment. Great to have you with us for Tigers football and TSU coming off a tough loss, Butch, against Prairie View in their rivalry game, the yeah. emotional game last Saturday night. So no matter how you slice it, they'd love to get in that win column this evening. Brett, this is what you call a get well game for the TSU Tigers tonight. Of course the loss to Prairie View was disappointing, but what you have to keep in mind, TSU had several players making their first start for the Tigers, and that's difficult because it's going to take just a little time to gel and get on the same page. But what we expect to see tonight is an opportunity to put some points on the board and an opportunity to build confidence for the Tigers. Indeed. Of course, the opponent, Bacon College, and you might be saying, who's Bacon <laughs> College? Bacon College is a four-year private liberal, liberal arts school from Muskogee, Oklahoma, and you know what, Brett? They only have 900 students, so you would think that might be tough to feel the football team, but they are out here tonight, and last week, they got a taste of football, moving into the Southland Conference, taking on Lamar, and that was not pretty. It did not go well. They lost 66 to three, but switching gears and talking about the Tigers on the ground tonight. One guy we expect to see a lot of is, is Daryl Robinson. Daryl Robinson, he comes in at about 5'10", 200 pounds, but you know what, last week he ran like he was 6'2", 230. This guy runs hard when he has the football. Don't worry about those numbers. Four carries for 18 yards. The flow of the game last week did not give him an opportunity to carry the ball much, but we expect to see a lot of him tonight. On defense, one guy we hope to see a lot of, we did last week making eight tackles, was a linebacker, Jamal Lucas. Jamal Lucas was quite the surprise last week. This guy was very active defensively. As you can see, he had a total of eight tackles, three solos, five assists. He plays solid technique, and he just seems to have a nose for the football, and the Tigers will be expecting a lot from him tonight. Just about time to kick things off a rare Friday night college football game in downtown Houston. The Bacon College Warriors and the TSU Tigers and our kickoff comes your way next. smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. about time for football tonight from BBVA Compass Stadium and the Bacon College Warriors will get the football first. So Bacon, as we mentioned, in their first contest lost at Lamar 66-3. The Tigers hoping to get back in the win column after they lost here last Saturday night against Prairie View. You know, uh, Brett, you love to open the season with a win, but when you don't, you know, the Tigers actually played a really fine defensive game early last week. It, it should have been a 7-3 game at the half. It was actually only 10-3. So they really came to play, and I, I see they're starting on defense again tonight, so that's going to be trying to set the tone early in this one to maybe get something going quickly. 
and Eric Medina to kick off. And here is the boot. We're underway tonight from BBVA Compass Stadium. Moses Gilbert III on the kickoff return. He'll fight his way back out near the 20 where he was uh, wrapped up by Gary Holmes and company. So reasonable field position for the Warriors as they start first. And this is setting up exactly the way the Tigers would like to see it happen here. You know, you get out, you get these guys three and out, you get off the field and you turn it over to the offense. And they really want to get that offensive role tonight. Because this was an offense last week. We mentioned, Butch, they scored just three points at Lamar, but they also had just three first downs. And it was a struggle to get anything going offensively. Troy Stewart did not start the game at quarterback. He's listed as the QB under center as we get underway tonight. And the handoff goes to Roderick Mackey. Runs right into the line and Asafatu, the defensive tackle who made four tackles a week ago there on the stop. Sekiro Asafatu did a fine job last week for the Tigers and watch him right here filling the hole, slipping off the block, sliding down the line, getting himself in position to make that stop. Tigers being aggressive early in this one. He had some help as well. You should see the Tigers swarm after a gain of one. McComb with those three first downs last week, they had more penalty yards than they did total offense. 88 yards in penalties, just 87 yards total offense. So, Butch, I'm curious to see what this week of practice meant for them if they're able to rebound and try and uh, pick up some first downs, but a good play by Jarius Moore. Jarius Moore is there, Amir Bloom also helping on the tackle, and as you can see, the Tigers, they smelled that run out early, and they stuffed him in the backfield there. These guys, you know, when you get only three first downs one week, you're going to have a change in quarterback, and that's what happened tonight uh, with Trey Seward coming on to start this game for them. Obviously, they did not have a lot going on last week. They were 0 of 10 on third down conversions. They're faced with a third and long here, third and eight. And a whistle blows before the snap. Our referee tonight, Scott Johnson. We'll see if the infraction is going against the Warriors. Matthew Zapata, he is the right guard. The big senior jumped early, so it'll be a little more difficult. Third down conversion for the Warriors. Coach Asbury would love to get a stop, get the football, and see if they could put some points on the board. Just 27 passing yards all of last week for the Warriors. We'll see what Stewart can do here. He's going to take off. Stewart will be drugged down shy of the marker, so he gave it a pretty good drive. And it was Gary Holmes who was one of those there for the Tigers to wrap him up along with Derek Lyles, the nose tackle. We also have a flag down, Brett. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 94. Five-yard penalty, or 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Yeah, I mentioned Lyles was in on the stop. Unfortunately, he did so with the face mask, so a costly penalty because it keeps the Tigers' defense on the field, and it provides a first down for Baco and Conley. That was unfortunate because Lyles did the right thing. He was hustling. He was hustling back to the football, and it was kind of an accidental face mask because he just reached out to grab something, got just a little bit of that face mask, and it's going to be costly. It's going to be a first down for Baco. Coach Asbury said today the one thing he was disappointed against in Prairie View is the fact that he felt like they didn't wrap up when it came to tackling. There's a pass completed into the flat for a short gain to R.W. Royal, the backup tight end. Dondre Dobbins there in a hurry to make the stop. Take another look. We'll see this tight end catch the ball in stride, but a good tackle. And that's what he was talking about. He said, we made some contact. We didn't always wrap up, and it was a point of emphasis this week in practice. And, and you're seeing it early in this game that they are wrapping up, keeping the head up, and bringing the guy down on the first attempt. Gain of one on the play. So the Warriors from Big Cone College started with a football. And it's Trey Stewart under center. There's Roderick Mackey, the senior, fighting for yards. He's across midfield before Dondre Dobbins got him. It'll bring up about third and three. Dobbins, a young man from Louisiana, up from his safety position. He's been active early on this first drive. And you can see the Tigers are trying to be very aggressive. He slipped away from 
from Sekiru right there. He picked up a couple of extra yards, but that's going to bring up a key third down play. So Stewart will go from the gun with Roderick Mackey to his right. Two receivers each side of the formation. The Tigers' defense looked like they were going to get a three and out, hoping to stop here. Here comes the blitz, and the pass on the boundary was complete. It, it was Graylin Dummins. And it might be just enough for the first down. The sophomore made a nice tackle, We're gonna, a nice reception. Picking that ball off the carpet. Dobbins was there on coverage, but that's that, an outstanding catch. That's an outstanding catch. It's also a very dangerous pass. He had just enough zip on it to get it in there. Fine play right there as they picked up the first down. Second first down on this drive. So keep in mind, just three first downs all of last week. They're now into Tiger territory. First and 10 from the 46. So Trey Stewart getting his opportunity this week and a handoff and a little stutter step there by Mackey. Plows into the line. And it's Asafatu there in the stop defensively for TSU. But a pickup of four, so they've been able to stay away from those second down and long or third and long situations. It is, and, and, and last week that TSU had just a little problem getting off the field on third down. Prairie View made several third down conversions and uh, Right now, we haven't seen that because the penalty got the first first down. So now that the penalty becoming more and more costly. Now that Bacon is on the march, a second and five. Stewart able to slip out of a tackle, throwing on the run, and able to complete a pass. His receiver lost his hat. Raheem McMorris was there. Raheem McMorris also played a fine game last year, and, and this is a play where he, he just had a little bit too much time. He got to survey the whole field, came back to his receiver, found him wide open near the sideline, and that was a pretty good catch there by Everett Davis. Senior made the catch. There's McMorris who was involved on the stop, the young man out of Holmes Community College, but another first down for the Warriors. So this is really a situation where you want to see this defense make a play at some point. Raheem McMorris was also pretty active last week. He, was, he got involved in a lot of plays. Six tackles in that loss against Prairie View, 38-11 to 11 on this field. field that took a lot of rain earlier today, but in pretty good shape as Roderick Mackey runs into some big gray shirts, including King in the front of the uh, defensive line. Take a look, big Damon King stepping up there to make a hit, helping out Jamal Lucas. Tigers just stuffed that one right at the line of scrimmage. So I got pretty cool. I got a message from uh, the Damon's mom. She actually said she watched the broadcast last week. She's going to be watching tonight. So, Tonia, if you are watching, there's your baby boy there coming up with a big play early in this game. Oh, 6'4", 260 pounds, the junior with a play. Second down and 10, some play action. That pass was deflected and incomplete, intended for Royal, who made a catch earlier, the backup tight end. Pass just a little bit too tall. Bacon do, actually doing a really good job early in this game of mixing up the plays. They're doing a lot of misdirections, putting him out on the roll where he can look downfield and try to pick up an open man, but that pass just a little too high right there. So Butch, it's third and 10, but maybe a gain of four or five. This could be two down territory for the Warriors. They have to think about it because you're right on the edge where a field goal may be too long for you. So uh, this has to be a positive down, though, for them to go that route. So far, so good, though, for the junior quarterback, Trey Stewart. See what magic he has in here. The rush picked up nicely, and that ball deflected on the boundary. A good play by McMorris, able to knock that ball loose away from Dunham's and knocked it incomplete, so it brings up fourth down. Fine, fine defensive play. He, he came up and challenged on the ball right there. An aggressive play. Got, to, got his hand in there and knocked the ball away from the receiver. A big play to bring up fourth down. So a good read, fourth down, and it looks like the punting unit is coming on. Blake Pierce is going to come on, although I say kicking unit. They're going to attempt a long one. They're going to try for a 50-yard field goal. Pierce made one last week, accounted for all their points, but it was only 24 yards. This time he's going to try and go from 50 yards, but it looks like first the Warriors want to call a timeout. Wanted to call that timeout, so we'll step aside. 8.43 to play in our first quarter. The Warriors trying to score first when you come back.
This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. The band in full force here at BBVA Compass Stadium. One less day to prepare with a rare Friday night game. Trey Seward, the quarterback for Bacon, took his team down the field where this man, Blake Pierce, can try and put the Warriors on the board. He's going to attempt a field goal of 50 yards. From the hold of his quarterback, this one's not going to come anywhere close. Barely reaches the end zone to the Tigers' defense. Able to hold and keep the Warriors from putting any points on the board. I was about to say he must have a pretty big leg, a 50 yard on a wet field, but as you can see right there, it wasn't even close, but uh, that was their first scoring attempt. And I guess when you have a game like last week, when you just come up with uh, three first downs the entire game and you don't complete a third down conversion, you're gonna try anything to get on the board. Successful drive. Now let's take a look at the team uniforms presented by Russell Athletic, TSU of course, in those maroon uniforms tonight, the visitors in the white unis with red helmets. Great looking uniform for the Tigers. And Jonathan Bowen will be the quarterback. Coach Darrell Asbury says he really wants to see him grow from last week. And the quick pitch to Larry Clark, the third, and fighting for yards across the 40 yard line. Nice gain on first down for Clark. And you see the Tigers coming out early with a misdirection play. Larry Clark, who has a little speed, trying to break that one, and he just about did. They almost had it sealed right there on the end, but Clark fighting for that extra yards picks up eight on the play. Adrian Medley wrapped him up. Bowen last week threw for 109 yards. He rushed for 30. He'll rush for the first down. Tries to get to the boundary. Bowen will step it bounds shy of the 40 and picks up a first down. A good carry for the young quarterback. When we take a look at that again, you're going to be able to see it. It's a design run all the way, and Bowen just takes off, and there's a huge hole there. You could have dri driven that proverbial Mack truck through that one. A big game for Bowen, but actually he did a good job doing that last week of seeing the open spaces, even when he was in the pocket, pulling it down and running for the extra yards. Coach Asbury felt like maybe the speed of the game was a little fast for him early, but he gained a lot from practice going back, looking at the tape, getting ready for this week play action and that pass went nowhere a quick flip to Billy Rosenberg the tight end but he was clipped after a short gain not a lot available third catch of the year for Rosenberg and it was Darden who was able to chop him down a little action inside and you can see Bowen pull the football out and just dumped it off a quick gain to Rosenberg and just picking up something on first down so pick up of three the Tigers on the march Scored 11 points last week. That touchdown came late in the game. Bowen has a lot of running room right up the seam. Sheds the first tackler, but not the second. And he will go down. It was one of the linebackers, David Cooper, a junior. Had him around the ankles, and it'll be third and short. And that's what we were talking about earlier. That was actually a pass play. He saw the opening, and he just decided, I'm going to pull it down and take my five yards here and come back and, and, and set up for the next play, a short, a third and short. Got to believe some type of points in this opening drive would be a nice confidence boost for this team. Even on third and short, he'll operate from the gun. Looked like the Warriors may have jumped. The handoff goes to Robinson. We featured him in the open. Robinson is loose. Breaks away from a tackle, still on his feet inside the 20, down to the 15-yard line. Corey Fletcher, the last man there to wrap him up. And there's that tough running I was talking about right on the top. I mean, and now we, maybe we have a flag down. Let's see. Offside, defense, number 29. Penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. It was a free play. Teddy Littleton jumped, but the Tigers, to their credit, took advantage. This is what I like about Darrell Robinson, though. This guy is never cheated. I mean, anytime he touches the football, if you're on defense, you better have that chin strap buckled up because this guy will hit you. See if he gets a chance. Another free play, but that was unabated. So this will be a mark off against Bacon. Trying to anticipate the snap count. Number 99, defense. Five-yard penalty. 
still first down. Big Adrian Medley came flying through the line of scrimmage. He's a hard man to miss. Yeah, and as a defensive lineman, you try to get every edge you can get, but you can't, when you jump that quickly, I mean, you're really putting your team in a bind, and he was way across the line there. He tried to get in that backfield. Bowen, quarterback keeper. Nice read at the five, into the end zone for the TSU touchdown and their first drive of the night to the quarterback, Jonathan Bowen, was fantastic to provide six points for TSU. And that is just what the doctor ordered for the Tigers. I mean, your first drive, your first possession, you go down and you put points on the board. Bowen, right there, that was that design run again. He really wasn't going to pass that one. He just looked one way, looked right, pulled it down, ran to his left. A couple of nice moves there and uh, take it in for the touchdown. Eric Medina on for the extra point try from the hold of Smith. And he pumps one right through the uprights, and it is good. So the Tigers in their first possession of the night cash in seven points, and they lead Bacon 7-0 at BBVA Compass here in downtown Houston. Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchie's. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. What a drive for Jonathan Bowen Butch. He made a couple of plays with his feet, also got his receivers and tight ends involved, and then cashed in the touchdown. Six plays, 67 yards, and they made a lot of good decisions. TSU did a lot of things right on that drive, and boy, what a way to start the ball game. You know, sometimes when you have a young quarterback, you don't want to put too much on his plate, and you kind of get there. You see he and Coach Asbury on the sideline. You kind of get the idea that that may have been what happened last week. They didn't want to give him too many wrinkles. Well, you look out there tonight, and you're seeing they're doing a lot of things offensively. They're throwing a lot of things at the defense, and that's because this is his second start. When you think about it, it's so unique and so tough to start with maybe your most important game, an a rivalry game right out of the gates when so many teams load up on teams that they feel like they can get to get a win. That was the challenge, of course, of that Labor Day Classic. So when you lose that game, it makes for a tough week, a short week before this game on Friday night, and one where the Tigers put more of an emphasis of just getting that win. And you, and you also have so many guys making their first start last week. That, that's difficult, too. We talked about that on the top. Great kick by Medina back into the end zone, and Porter will just take a knee, a rocket of a leg from Medina, and a touchback for the Warriors. You know, this year coming into the season, the Tigers have two offensive, two new coordinators. On defense, of course, they got Heisman Northern, who was at Prairie View last year, and on offense, they have John Shannon. And you can see a little bit of John Shannon in that drive, how they look, it looked like they put a couple of extra wrinkles in, into that offense. You're talking about John Shannon, a guy, John Sherman, a guy who'd been at Marshall and Toledo and really put up some big numbers in some of his previous stops. Troy and State, Jackson State. Absolutely, yeah. and you see that offense kind of clicking with some up-tempo success. It's kind of cool because he was actually, uh, you know, he was coach's quarterback coach, I think, at Jackson State. So they, their relationship goes way back. <laughs> Trey Seward had a pretty good opening drive, and he will complete his first pass of this sequence. Able to drop one right into the hands of DeAndre Hood. 
Nice gain on first down defensively there for TSU was Archie Rice. Seward had a little time, and he was in the pocket there, and his guy hooked up in front of the defense early, so he had an open receiver, and that time he was able to hit him. Now, last week, Francis Drummond was listed as the starter. Seward has been there throughout. Big guy, 6'3", 205-pound junior, and he's looked pretty good tonight. He has. They, you know, they've, they've set him up in situations where he hasn't had to hang on to the ball, and that's always key when you have a, an offensive line that's suspect. Another guy targeted Dunham's on the boundary. He sent the ball in his direction a couple of times, but it was McMorris on the tackle again. He's been very active from his corner position, the Holmes Community College product. We're going to take another look at it again, and you can see Seward getting rid of the ball quickly. It seems like that's going to be what they're trying to do tonight. That's part of the strategy is let's do a lot of misdirection plays, and when we are going to pass it, we'll take that short drop and just dump it off as quickly as possible. He has been accurate. That was a gain of five. So on second and five, they'll go to the ground, and nothing there available. Look at all the maroon shirts engulfing the ball carrier. Derek Lyles, one of the first to stop Roderick Mackey. Derek Lyles got there first. Watch him come off the block. He met the runner in the backfield, and then he got a lot of help from his friends in a hurry. Lucas also there. Big Derek Lyles, the junior at a Mississippi, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, will make things more difficult for Seward here now, facing a third and seven. And that's one of the things the Tigers' defense wanted to do coming into this one, you know, force these guys into third and long, you know, take away certain things that they can do, make them throw the ball downfield. They'll spread it out, two receivers each side on third down and seven. Seward's going to have to scramble. Trying to get the first down. There's a late marker as Seward was tackled a couple of yards shy of the first down by Demetrius Johnson. Let's see what this penalty is all about. Our referee tonight's been busy. It's Scott Johnson. We'll hear from him again. Coach Asbury may be Holding. declining this penalty. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Left guard was guilty of the infraction, but in a punting situation, the Tigers content to decline and get the football back. Tigers came with the blitz from the right side. You're going to see coming right into your screen right there. So they forced him out of the pocket. He stepped up. He knew he had to get to the sticks, so he was trying to direct some blocking downfield. Just could not get a room to get it. So that's going to bring up fourth down. Great call. You could see the holding infraction pretty easily on that camera shot. So it's fourth and two, but right now for the time being, Seward is on the field and the punter has not come on. And now with the play clock winding down, Bacon will burn a timeout. Already their second used here in this first quarter. That's their second timeout of the half, so that, that's not good news for the Warriors because they have one left for the rest of the half. We're still in the first quarter. Bush, do you consider going for it here? You're already down 7 nothing. It, it didn't look like they were ready to bring the punter on at all. Well, you know, in, in a game like this, if you're a Bacon college, you might ought to go for it. You have to go for it. You only got three first downs last week. You're trying to get something positive for your team. On that first drive, they came up with three first downs. They did a good job of moving the football. So at the same token, on the other side, the Tigers are saying, hey, let's, let's stuff them right here and send that message loud and clear that it's not going to be that kind of night, gentlemen. It's going to be our night. And so it, 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 this is a tone setter. But I, no, I don't have a problem with them going for it. They, they feel like they have to put points on the board if they're going to be in this game because, you know, you look at that uh, Texas Southern drive on the first possession, you know they're going to score some points. Big number 94 might get a chance for another stop here. We'll see what Bacon has decided after the timeout, but Seward coming right back on the football field. So the Tigers could have taken that penalty and backed him way up and had a third and long. They probably thought the Warriors were going to punt, but they're going to go for it here on fourth and two. So much for that. Now, they don't have a big traveling roster, Butch. That's about 90% of the team right there. <laughs> they were all on the field at the same time. <laughs> Dandre Dobbins back, hoping for a chance to return this punt. And first, a whistle. So Blake Pierce, who does the place kicking, also does the punting. But I think the Warriors let the play clock 
run out. Yeah. Now that's going to give the Tigers time to get their punt return unit on the field because what happened, they tried a little trickery there. They figured we'd go off, we'll send our punter out and make their defensive team return the punt. And as you can see, Malik Cross heading into the game. So now TSU is getting an opportunity to make the adjustment. So all that running around and then you have a flag and it's for none. Didn't work out for Coach Lawrence Livingston. His first season at Bacon College. An Oklahoma school that's been in Texas between Beaumont last Saturday here in Houston tonight. They're probably going to be ready to get the heck out of Texas when all of this is over with. <laughs> Pierce took a long time. This is a good punt. Arcing towards Dobbins. He's going to throw up the hand, but did not make the catch. In fact, Dobbins was replaced by Malik Cross. He wasn't content to make the reception, and the ball stops at the 16. You mentioned John Shannon, the offensive coordinator, when we talked in that last drive. And you really saw pieces of what he wanted to do or what he hopes to do with this offense, the way they had that run-pass balance and move the football down the field at will in that opening sequence. And, and it's a process. You know, you, when, you, when you're talking about off, being an offensive coordinator and putting in your offense and deciding what your philosophy is going to be, what your personality is going to be on offense, you know, nowadays they run a close pro set. They use almost eight wide receivers a game. you got people all over the place. You have to go through it slowly, especially when you have a new quarterback. And I think we're seeing a lot of new things tonight. Here's a handoff on first down and a broken play. Robinson stayed on his feet. He'll gain 11 or 12 and scramble for the first down before Moses Gilbert III tackled him, but another explosive run. I love that guy because to him, the shortest distance between two lines, the two points is that straight line, and check him out. I mean, he just puts that head down, and he doesn't mess around with it, Brett. He's coming at you. He's not looking to avoid somebody. He's looking for somebody to hit. Which I love guys that are at full speed that can make a cut and not lose a gear, not downshift. Bowen back into the pocket with time to throw, looking for the deep ball, arcing one towards Griffin. Griffin may have a chance to the boundary. He needs a cut back at the 20. Griffin still <laughs> on his feet. He's going to go for the touchdown. 72 <laughs> yards for the big play receiver out of Terry High School. Coach Darrell Asbury and Coach Shannon, they love this guy. He's 6'7 and 230 pounds, and he runs like a gazelle. He just floats up and down the field. But check this out. Bowen airs it out. He didn't really have an opportunity to throw one like that last week. And you can see, I keep saying they added some new wrinkles, but that's one of them. And look at this guy. One of the things I knew Coach Asbury wanted to do was get the ball in number 80's direction more, and the first time he touches it, it turns into a long touchdown. One of the first questions I had for the coach today was talking about that man, big number 80, Derek Griffin, because of his unique story, his playmaking ability, and give Bowen credit for hitting him in stride for the score. But you're talking about a guy, though, Butch, in Derek Griffin that was, you talk about stars. There were a lot of stars when he was coming out of high school. It's been kind of a wild route to get here. There were some other teams kind of hanging around wondering if he might go to a bigger school in A&M or TCU, but he got on campus, part of this program, and really the sky is the limit from a potential standpoint. It is. It is. You, you just got just a little glimpse of it there, but this guy, to be so big and have those kind of skills, he's got soft, soft hands. He can make the play, and then he can finish after he makes the catch. We can take a look right here, Bowen. He just aired that thing out. He said, go get it. And Griffin went and got it. And then that's when the play started. He made the catch and then watched the run. He's in complete control, cuts it back, and he's in for the touchdown. Just, just a, a fantastic athlete to watch do his thing. You could see him. You could envision in the future that guy playing on Sundays, a five-star recruit. They don't just hand those things out. Former Texas A&M committee never signed a letter of intent. But with all the talent in the world and really the challenge for coach Asbury and Shannon is just to get him involved I love to see that that shot at the end zone very early in the game and look at those guys on the sideline you know th that's what it's about you get a big play and you go and you you celebrate with your teammates and but sometimes Brett things just work out the way they're supposed to work out and you get with a guy like coach Asbury and and you, and you he reaches you and you can come out and see him reach his full potential like that Exciting to see in the Tigers lead at 14 nothing, but a bobbled kick by Porter, and then Porter is going to try and turn this into a nice gainer. So what could have been disastrous, watches him take the ball across the 
the 20-yard line before he's finally wrapped up by Gary Holmes. How many times do you see that on a kickoff return? A guy mishandles the kick, and he actually comes up with a good game because for a while there, it looks like he was going to be trapped inside his own 10, and somehow he got possession of the ball and managed to take it out just over the 20-yard line. Trey Seward back in there. This is the third possession, now down 14-0. His offense has moved the football. Just haven't been able to capitalize, and really nothing available here on first down. So we're going to introduce you to the third member of our crew down in the field, Nick Strong. Hey, guys, on that last play, on that last touchdown, actually, that was Jonathan Bowen to Derek Griffin. One thing that head coach, uh, excuse me, offensive coordinator John Shannon said to the guys was, great job. He really wanted to emphasize the point that last week we didn't get that on the second drive of the game, and they really didn't get that in the game. But it was a great job and a great time to get these Tigers up and excited on the sideline, which actually is probably going to excel the defense right here. Back up to you guys. It's amazing how momentum carries over from one unit to another. Gain of one on the previous play, second and nine, facing the Warriors. Seward able to connect, shy of the 30-yard line. Frederick Mackey out of the backfield caught it, but he was wrapped up quickly by Jamal Lucas, one of the guys we featured on our open after eight tackles last week. You know, you got to wa love watching this guy play. That's a tough tackle to make in the open field like that. You could, I talked about how he had that great technique. You could see him chopping the feet, keeping himself balanced, and pull the running back down right in the open field. Chance for the defense to get off the field. Third and three. See what Seward and the Warriors do here. Lucas did a lot of that last week, though. He really did. A little shoulder fake maybe led to an open toss to the boundary. And the pass was complete to Landon Bird Weaver, just a 5'8 freshman wide receiver. But watch this little shoulder turn that maybe took the defense away from Weaver for just a split second. You know, as a quarterback, that's all you need. It's just that split second of misdirection where you get a defensive back to look the other way or think you're looking to go the other way, and you just relax for just a second, and they can pop that ball in there for a quick completion. Maybe a chance for another player or two here in our first quarter. Really been impressed with Seward, what he's done, but it's the Tigers with a couple of scoring drives leading 14-0. Seward going under center. Little flip to DeAndre Hood. What a stop. Jerry is Moore. Moore was having nothing <laughs> of that play right there. You know, we got to see a lot of more last year, of course, when Claiborne got hurt, but just a little flare pass out there, and then watch more. We, we talked about the open field tackle a minute ago. That's how you make an open field tackle. I mean, he hit him, and the progress just stopped immediately. Lucas coming in to help him polish him off. Got hit so hard, his hat fell off, but uh, Coach Asbury wanted the emphasis to be not just on hitting guys, but to wrap up and make some stops, and I think he has to be pleased with what he's seen from his defense in this first quarter. Yeah, and I mentioned on the top also, the defense did play well in the first half last week, and so they're kind of picking up right where they left off. They're just not on the field as much as they were last week. That'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. The Warriors able to smile. They've had a couple of good drives, but it's the Tigers out to a 14-0 lead after one quarter from BBVA Compass Stadium here in downtown Houston. Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchies. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever.
Macomb Warriors started with a the football. They had some success moving the ball, even though they weren't able to put some points on the board. But TSU didn't have that problem. A couple of touchdowns for the Tigers. And they lead 14 to nothing after one quarter. And really, the TSU defense also part of the storyline tonight. They are part of the storyline tonight because they really did a good job of forcing these guys off the field and letting their offense, giving them good field position to operate. That's one of the keys in this game. And, and when you have a 14 nothing lead, your fans get pretty happy. And that's what's going on here tonight. So we switch sides, start our second quarter. It's a second and seven for the Bacon College Warriors out of Muskegee, Oklahoma. Seward with a little flip to the boundary. DeAndre Hood races up just shy of the 40-yard line before Demetrius Johnson threw him out of bounds. We talked about this quick turnaround. It's just one extra day playing on Friday instead of Saturday. But coming off that loss, season opener, an emotional game, 20,000 fans here. And Coach Asbury, I thought, had a great comment today. He said, I haven't had to do a lot of talking this week. My kids understood we needed to get better. He was happy with the week of practice, but he also said they fed off my reactions. He felt like he needed to be positive in order to generate that out of his team and not be sour or down after losing that first game. Has to be pleased. He'd love to get off the field here on third and four. Roderick Mackey will be short by a couple of yards. Ran right into the line, and Jamal yeah. Lucas again. Well, you, you think of it as a quick week, but, but it's really not a quick week when you lose your opener because you can't wait to get back out there again. Yeah, yeah. And that's what he wanted to, to get across to these guys. Hey, we have a chance to go and get this taste out of our mouths, and we got a chance to do it quickly. And you mentioned that he said his prosana rubbed off onto the players. They saw his approach to this, how positive he was, and how he, much he wanted to come out and get a victory uh, tonight. And you can tell all these guys, they came out fired up for this one. And they'll get the football back. Malik Cross hoping to make a play. He's back at his 20, waiting for this punt from Pierce. A short kick and a chance for Cross. Cross trying to get that seam and get some blocking. He's going to reverse his field. The blocking is set up. Cross up near the 40. Will step out shy of the 43 of markers flying all around the football field. I'm sure that's about the helmet laying down at the field at about the 30-yard line. Before we get our officials indication, you can catch the TSU football live in HD on Root Sports all season long. Root Sports, the home of Tiger football. Watch the games live or on replay as well during the week. And uh, I think you're right, Butch. Once that helmet comes off, you're dead. You yeah. can't continue to play. Otherwise, that's an infraction and a penalty against TSU. Cross made a pretty cool move because I thought he was going to jump over it there for a second. I was hoping he'd see it, and he did. Number four looks like he's shaken up a little bit on, on the play for Bacon. I think that's Eric Brown, but they're, they've been checking him out for a little bit now. And he's a Houston kid. He's a Nimitz High School product, so you know he's thrilled to be playing back here in Houston. Right now he's being attended to. And, and another side note tonight, we talked about how small Bacon is with 900 kids. They do not have any trainers here today. They're borrowing the TSU trainers in order to help them out. They don't have a sports information director. So really, it's a community effort for TSU to help out whatever injured players come down from Bacon. They came in. I think they only have four coaches also. So it's, it's a scaled-down effort. That's a good sign right there. He's actually walking off the field, so we hope Eric Brown's okay. During the return, number 41 of the receiving team's helmet came off, and he participated in the play. That's an unsportsmanlike conduct foul, 15 yards, first down, TSU. That's Amir Wagner, and of course, that's just a safety issue, Butch. They don't want guys continuing to make plays. And you think of some of the, the glory days in the NFL when Brett Favre lost his helmet and continued to throw the ball downfield. They just don't want that. In the bottom of your screen, you see Wagner still blocking, still competing without his helmet. Well, it's, it's a safety issue. You know, we, we talk a lot, we hear a lot of news about concussions these days, and you don't want to make it any easier to have a concussion. But that that's going to happen every once in a while. As guys hook it up, and the helmet goes flying off, and... That's why they have that rule. Jonathan Bowen back on the field. His, his last pass was the 70-plus yard toss to Derek Griffin for the score that made it 14-0. It looked like Bacon jumped again. 
Robinson to the outside. Robinson still on his feet, flying across the 40 and dropped it about the 43-yard line by Tabaha. Offside, number 99 of the defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. So the Warriors have had some difficulties staying on their side of the line of scrimmage. These and guys, it's Medley again. These guys feel like they need a head start to try to get Robinson in the backfield because once he gets ahead of steam going, he's into the secondary quickly. A big run right there by Darrell Robinson. Bowen. Quick pass to the boundary to Austin Watts, getting him involved. And Watts races into Bay Cone territory. And he's out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. So a nice effort connecting with the junior at a Pearl River Community College. Austin Watts is another one of those receivers who's going to be in and out of the game tonight. They play eight, which is a lot of receivers, but they play all eight. And you can see why he can get in there and make the play. He's a speedster. He can get down the sideline and stretch the field a little bit. Big body guy, 6'1", 190. Roy Hodge, the third out of San Antonio, made the stop, but not before the Tigers are on the march again. So Bowen has led some successful drives. Let's see what the Tigers have here in a more of a power situation. Bowen with the zone read. He'll pick up 10 plus, nearly 15 yards on the keeper for Jonathan Bowen before David Cooper was really the last line of defense for the Warriors. Jonathan Bowen, he just looks a lot more confident tonight. Right there, he saw he wasn't going to be able to turn the corner on the outside, cut it back inside, stopped on a dime, and made a nice game for the Tigers. Another local kid from Cypress Lakes High School. Everybody recruits Houston. It doesn't matter the conference, the level of play. A lot of players out of this area. So Bowen back. Here comes the rush. Hangs in the pocket. Throws one towards the end zone. I think that ball was caught. And it was for a touchdown. Tracy Johnson beats his man to the inside. It was Eric Brown back in the game who had the position, but Johnson got the touchdown. Watch, watch Bowen now. He saw the blitz coming right down his throat. He saw the guy right there. He hung in there until the last possible second and threw a strike into the end zone, and Tracy Johnson came away with a sweet catch in the corner. What a great catch, but I like it. We were just talking about his composure under pressure, and that was a perfect example of it. Well, Coach Esbury wanted to see Bowen give his wide receivers a chance to make a play, and what a better example than that scoring to us as Eric Medina knocks one through and makes it 21-0 TSU. And after scoring just 11 points last week, what Bowen has done is provided the home run on a couple of occasions and really seeing what this offense can do when they click on all cylinders. Bowen has looked so confident tonight, but you know, they, they, the, their biggest problem tonight is going to be how are we going to get all these receivers in the game? Because anybody who's in there comes up with the big play. That was a nice catch in the end zone for the touchdown. Tracy Johnson, the redshirt sophomore out of St. Petersburg, Florida, 6'2", 190. I like the size on these wide receivers for the Tigers. That's it, and that, that's very impressive because you can't teach size. You have to have that, and, and when you have size, you always have a shot at the ball. You always have a shot because usually you're going to be bigger than the defensive and, back. And Butch, you've seen it in the SWAC. You're going to go up against some teams with some defensive backs that are 5'10", 5'11". You have that two- or three-inch height advantage, and you can go get the football and a quarterback who can put it out there. There's big plays to be made. And that's why I, I like I was talking about Bowen under pressure. He knows what he has on the outside. He held that football until the last possible second, and there's go going to be opportunities when you would normally throw it away where you're going to throw it high and give your receiver an opportunity. Let's go back and recap the scoring drive. A little bit of everything with Bowen. It's hard to believe it was only four plays, but they were some big ones. Austin Watts with a big play. Then Bowen keeps up the middle before he's finally knocked down after a nice game. And then this one with the blitz breathing down his throat. He floats a beautiful pass into the end zone. And Tracy Johnson hauled it in for the touchdown. 21 nothing Tigers. Hey, give it up. Give him some. Come on. <laughs> give him that high five. That was Homer Causey, who was the, was the quarterback last year. He's playing defensive back this season. Another kickoff for Eric Medina. Porter and Weaver, the two deep men, hoping for a chance to return. But this guy's got some thunder in that right leg of his. We haven't seen Corey Carter tonight. That's a good thing if you're a TSU fan, an NFL-type punter. But we've seen a lot of Medina. 
And a strong kickoff that'll sail to right around the one yard line taken by Weaver. Weaver up the right sideline. And he was finally dropped at the 26 yard line. The tackle was made by Demetrius Johnson on special teams. You mentioned how one side of the ball can carry that momentum over to the other side of the ball. I think we're seeing that happen right now because the offense, are, they're rolling. They're moving up and down the field, and that's given the defense a little blow. They could come out there. They get a little break. They come out there and say, hey, let's give it right back to them so they can put some more points on the board. See what the TSU defense can do against this Big Hole College offense. Now, we told you about their game at Lamar last Saturday. They lost 66-3. to They had three first downs. Listen to this, Butch. I don't think I've heard of this. Both coaches agreed at the half to play 10-minute quarters in the second half because the score was out of control. I would say the Warriors, even though they have not scored, have represented themselves fairly well tonight on offense. You no, know, and I don't know whether big play in the backfield. That's Lyles, isn't it? That's, I think that's the, the, Derek yeah, Lyles. Derek Lyles uh, take that as far as what you think on offense because he dropped Roderick Mackey for a loss. You know, he saw the guard pull in front of him, and he, he followed him right down the line, and that's what they teach you to do with that technique. If the guy pulls away from you, you shoot that gap. He did it and made a tackle in the backfield for a loss. He's been an impact player to say the least, but have you ever heard of shortening two quarters to ten minutes each? Uh, a mercy rule in college football? No, I haven't heard of that. <laughs> Trey Seward, though, has looked pretty good at times throwing the football, and he's probably in one of those downs here, second and 16, as they say that his own read. The football is loose, and let's see who's got it. Demetrius Johnson says the Tigers have it. Number 21 says he's on top of that ball. Looks like Bacon is back on top of the football. Seward got his own miss, and right there you're just fighting for self-preservation. That was your mistake on the zone read, and you want to get back on top of the football, even though you're going to be in the bottom of the pile. He just didn't secure that ball down in there on the handoff. He gave it to him high. It hits the pads, and it bounced to the ground. But you, you made a very uh, good point about these guys. Uh, Bacon, they did a lot of work this week, because when you look at the game they played last week, where you only have three first downs, they look pretty polished out here tonight. I know they don't have anything on the board, but they've moved the football well at times. This is the one drive where they really haven't had a lot to show for their efforts, and Mackey will be drugged down well shy. Even the original line of scrimmage, Cherius Moore, the North Shore product, tracked down the running back, Mackey, and it'll bring up fourth down. Just a little draw play. Mackey slides away from one tackler, and boy, was he kissed right there by Moore. Darius, the Tigers have some very active linebackers. I mean, they go from sideline to sidelines, and they don't mind putting a hat on you. Moore just has a nose for the football. He does. He Blake Pierce has been a busy man, and you know Malik Cross would love to find a way to break a big one. Good punt. Cross should have a chance for a return. Cross has the blocking set up. One man to beat on the boundary. Cross stays on his feet, and then finally the Warriors able to recover and tackle at about the 31-yard line. So we'll step out, 9-18 to play here in our second quarter. It's been all TSU so far, 21-0 Tigers. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many. Sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work. Together. Find the fabric of a team. It's 
It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many. Sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work. Together. Tiger fans, enjoying maybe unseasonably cool temperatures here for mid-September. Also enjoying a 21-0 lead. Great field position. They will start from the Warriors 31 and Bowen back. First play from scrimmage. His pass was intended for cross but fell incomplete. Coach Asbury, I think, said it best earlier today when just in a few words, Butch, he said it's time for us to get a win. You consider how the season started last year, the 5-1 and one beginning losing the last five, some in heartbreaking fashion, losing your rivalry game in front of a huge crowd to start the year. This would be kind of a monkey off the back and be able to celebrate a win type of game. And what an impressive quarter plus so far. And it started with this man, Bowen. He has been very tough to tackle in space, and it was finally the same guy, Eric Brown, who we've called several times tonight, the Nimitz High School product. That's Bowen, and that's just that quarterback draw. They've run that play several times. That's probably the third time in the first half, and it, it's just wide open, and they're going to keep running it until they do something to uh, stop it. But uh, Coach Asbury has a lot of confidence in this team. He knows he has some people stepping into starting positions for the first time, and he knows it's going to take a while, but he's got a lot of confidence in these guys, and he, he, he thinks they can get the job done. Third and two, and with this great field position, they'd like to stay on the field here, so probably two down territory. Let's see if Bowen just keeps the football. Robinson lined up to his left. Actually, that's not Robinson. That's Matthew Butler into the game. Butler, the freshman from Baton Rouge, is near the marker, but he was wrapped up. He might have been hit just a little short. Butler going off tackle the other way, and... Thought he had a little more room, but boy, what a nice tackle that is right there. It's funny, last week against Lamar, talking to some of the Cardinals folks, they said 53 was making a lot of tackles, but he wasn't on the roster. Guess what? He's, he's not making, on the roster tonight. He's making tackles tonight, <laughs> but he's still not on the roster. So 53 is having a game. Whoever he is. They got to get that taken care <laughs> of because you got a guy playing that hard. <laughs> he needs some recognition. You might want to make an addition to the roster for the Warriors, but... First and 10 for TSU, so the offense stays on the field. Matthew Butler, 5'9", 170, lined up to the left of Bowen. Bowen with a quick hitter and some hard contact made. That's Tracy Johnson who had the touchdown earlier, but it was one of the corners, Kobe Tabaha, who was there almost immediately. Bowen does a great job of just getting that football out quickly. I mean, that pass out there over the flats, you got to get that on your receiver in a hurry because he's going to be hit quickly. But So he did a good job where his receiver could turn around and, and square up and try to make as much as he could on that play. Tigers to the line of scrimmage quickly on second and eight inside the red zone of the Warriors. Bowen rolling, keeping the football, and he's out of bounds at about the 12. Don't miss the TSU women's soccer team take on Grambling State September 25th at 7 p.m. at Durley Stadium. Tickets are on sale now. Log on to TSUball.com today for that soccer matchup coming up on the 25th. Eric Brown again involved on that play defensively for the Warriors. After the play, personal foul, number 81, offense, 15-yard penalty, Third down. It's Billy Rosenberg. Tight end. The big tight end. The senior tight end. And there it is right here. Let's see if we can pick it up. Well, we caught the tail end of it. I think it was 53 was on the receiving end of something there. That will not please the coaching staff because the Tigers were knocking on the door again. Now they're all the way back up there. 28-yard line. With a second and long. The down marker says third down. Coach Asbury might want an explanation on that. Should be second and 19. Nope, it is third down. That was the question. Oh my, there's your 
personal foul penalty on Rosenberg, and that was a pretty easy call. Have to get inside the 10 for a first down. Derek Griffin gave up the first down and then was able to find it to about the eight yard line. Eric Brown the stop, but boy, 80 in space is fun to watch. Check out Bowen though, he has a little time. He has a lane to throw the football and he stepped into it, threw a strike to Griffin and that big guy hauled it in right there. Right, you can see right there, perfect shot. Hit him right in the numbers and Griffin does the rest. His average per catch went down though because it was at 73 before that play. I think they'll take it where it is, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a huge third down conversion. And again, and the Warriors offside. jump off sides. They don't blow the play dead. Bowen, the keeper, lunging for the end zone. He's in again. What a heads up play by the quarterback, Jonathan Bowen. Normally, they will stop that play on an unabated. Offside, defense, number 53. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. Better believe it's declined. So the fourth touchdown of the game for the TSU Tigers, 27 to nothing. What a, what a heads up play though by Bowen here because he, he saw him jump, so he knows he has a free play. He fakes the zone read, keeps the ball, takes it down inside the five and then dives, dives into the end zone. Just yep. a good heads up play. He scored two touchdowns today. Every official with a flag in his pocket has thrown one on the field. I think we had too many men on the field for the Warriors. Substitution infraction, defense. Half the distance to the goal, we will retry. Too many men on the field, so even though Medina's kick went right through, they had blown the play dead, so he'll kick again. From the hold of Mario Smalls, Medina out of Laporte, trying to pump through his fourth extra point of the night. And it's good. 5.51 to play before halftime. It's been all TSU, a fun night for the Tigers. They lead the Warriors 28 to nothing. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many. Sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. Uptown Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But Capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away. Tigers took a couple of hits on that drive, but a big play on a long third down to Derek Griffin. Set up would be a touchdown run from Bowen, his second of the game. Short field, Butch, but another touchdown. Seven plays, 31 yards, but that was the key play, and it was, it was key, obviously, because they got the first down, but that's what you want to do. If you can start converting on third and long, it's going to turn into a very long game for your opponent, and that's what it looks like on the sideline when you're up 28 nothing with 5.51 to go in the second quarter. A lot of smiles, right, from Jonathan Bowen. Porter and Weaver stand back near their goal line. Fifth time tonight. Eric Medina has kicked off 28 nothing, TSU.
perfect kick right there at the pylon, and Weaver will take a knee. You couldn't put it in a better spot than that using the sideline in the end zone, and that'll be a touchback for the Warriors, and they'll have it with 5.51 to play before the half. You might be saying about this uh, Bacon team, and we touched on it in the open, just who are they, where are they from? They're part of the Central States Football League, and they were picked third preseason. Langston was number one. God University was second. After Bacon, it's Arizona Christian University, Wayland Baptist, Lyon College out of California, and Texas College. Those are the teams they go up against in their league. And they're an NAIA school, and they've come in tonight, and, and really uh, it's a credit to them because last week you know, they had a lot of holes to fill and a lot of things to, to iron out, and, and even though it's 28 nothing. They have still looked more like a football team tonight. Football is a tough game to play without a lot of depth. Seward lost the football, and I think the Warriors are back on top of it. Amir Bloom got to the quarterback, and Seward wasn't doing a very good job keeping that one close to him and nearly a turnover. Amir Bloom led the Tigers last year in sacks with eight, and here he is again on the pressure coming from behind. Strips the ball. Good play right there. Strips Seward, and the Tigers almost came away with a nice touchdown, a nice uh, turnover. So Bacon College back on top of it, but a loss of three on the play. As the clock's rolling, nearing the five-minute mark here of our second quarter. So the field position game really starting to favor the Tigers. Seward slinging one downfield. Great catch made in Tiger territory. It was DeAndre Hood, Hot Springs, Arkansas native, on the big gainer before Archie Rice made the tackle. Baco needs to invest in some chin straps. They keep losing <laughs> their helmets. Again, it was Amir Bloom uh, uh, forcing the pressure, forcing him out of the pocket, but... As he got out of that pocket, he kept his eyes downfield and found his man, and that, that's a big game. Their first since early in the first quarter, really. That's six first downs for Bacon College. They're in Tigers territory at the 45-yard line. They'll look to go to the air again. Amir Bloom thought he had the sack. Seward got loose and picked up about five yards before Jarius Moore cleaned up. Yeah, it's Amir Bloom again. I mean, he's living in their backfield right now. He gets away from his man, forces him out of the pocket again, and he could almost feel Jarius Moore coming down on him. <laughs> you can see some of the grass stains on the, the pants and the jersey of Seward, but he's played well tonight. Well, they've already doubled the first down amount that they had last week. Passed for 84 yards. They've rushed for about 30. Pass near the boundary, caught. Another helmet comes flying off. Everett Davis. Homer Causey on the stop, the former quarterback. Got that near the sideline. You can see Homer coming back, breaking on the ball. Got there just a little late, but not in time to make the tackle and to swing him down hard. That's a tough transition for you. You, yes, know, you, it is. you play quarterback for a couple of years, and all of a sudden they want you to go defensive back, and he goes, fine, just tell me who to hit. I'll hit him. You know, first of all, it's a transition mentally going yeah. from that leadership position, but also, of course, just a completely different position and responsibility. Mentally from the standpoint of just how aggressive you right. are. That's, that's the big thing of it, part of it. I mean, everything in today's day and age is the clock has stopped before this third and two play. Everything from a quarterback standpoint is avoiding the big hit, right? Before the delay of game, we have a timeout. Bacon, their first charge, timeout of the half. So Bacon with the timeout will step aside. 317 to play before the half. 28-0 to issue. Hello, I'm Alan Helfman. Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Miss Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. 
Ellen is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. Think. Question. Cut. Compare. Learn something new. Debunk something old. Hit a wall. And think again. Model. Plan. Spin. Discard. Now breathe. And keep going. Work till it's late. Then early. Then late again. Smile. Laugh. Rest. Regroup. Use technology. Use your hands. Use everything you've got. That's what it takes. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation. Making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Tigers having some fun tonight. They're hoping their defense can make a stop here on third and two. Bacon after the timeout in Tigers territory. See if Mackey gets a chance to run with the football. And he does. And he's got the first down and more. Mackey can't stay on his feet, and he'll fall at about the 27. But he'll move the sticks. He was being pursued. But it was the turf monster that got him. Ben Majoko. And a fourth Ben Elkins, probably credited with the tackle, even though Mackey just couldn't stay on his feet. But another first down, that is the seventh for the Warriors, despite trailing by four touchdowns. And Mackey going backwards. The football came out again. So that's the third time tonight the Warriors have fallen on their own mistake. It's the third time that ball has been loose, and the Tigers have just not been able to come up with it. You're going to take a look at it again. Mackey hits it in there, and he just dropped the football. King was there also. Damon King helped to strip that thing out right there, and it's gone. Zacchaeus, Bami Joko also in there for the Tigers, and they've been all over that football tonight. This is the kind of game when it's fun to play defense, and it's fun to play offense. Defense has been pursuing the football third and 17. Seward just going to take off and run. He will be shy of the marker. He's past the original line of scrimmage inside the 25 before he was escorted out of bounds. And we're seeing a lot of the second teamers get a chance to play defensively. That time, though, it was Tino Thomas. Well, as we take a look, that was all Trey Seward because he was in the pocket. They had the pressure on him. He managed to duck underneath one tackle and just got it upfield for as far as he could take it. You know, for a young man who's stepping into his first starting role, he's looked pretty confident tonight. Pass to the boundary, and it's incomplete. We had third and 17 on the scoreboard when it looked like it was fourth and seven. Now it'll bring up fourth and seven. Lyles was the guy forcing the pressure. They were double teaming him, and he still was able to put that pressure on. Derek Lyles, he's been a force tonight. I mean, he's been in their backfield a lot. Maybe a field goal try for Blake Pierce. So the Warriors got a field goal of 24 yards from Pierce late in the game last week in Beaumont against Lamar with about six minutes left in the game. They'll try and convert here, and the snap was mishandled. Doesn't matter who covers it now. It's going to be Tigers football. You know, Brett, it looks pretty dry from up here, but we got a lot of rain today, and I'm, I'm willing to bet you that that ball is pretty slick down there. Bad. You see the snap was just bad. It was high and off his shoulder there. He could not put it down. And the Tigers were right there to make sure they could not make a play out of it. 
Number 47 was the guy who missed the ball, but I don't see him on the yeah, roster either. Conveniently, he's not on the roster. Yeah, I was they they point left him off. off the roster also. He's pretty happy when that ball went right off his shoulder pad, even though it came in hot. So, you know, there's actually an advantage of not being on the roster. 47 couldn't handle it. One man who's on the roster, he's been in the end zone, is Bowen. An end around to Austin Watts. Watts with a head of steam. And there's that speed I was telling you about on the top. This, this guy is a burner. It's Eric Brown again involved defensively. We've been calling his name a lot, but that means the Tigers have been deep in the secondary of the Warriors. Tigers with a little misdirection play right there. They get that defense flowing one way, and you come back with a guy like Watts who has his kind of speed. Boy, that, that's a tough play to contain. Good block downfield from the receiver. Malik Cross helps spring that play as well. First and ten. We're inside a minute and a half to go before intermission. Bowen still looking to make a play, and he will be content to step out. And that's a wise decision. Stop the clock and uh, not get too greedy. That's a wise decision on two points. One, you do want to stop that clock. That's the most important thing because to get another score before the half would be huge. And the other thing is you don't want to take any unnecessary punishment when you're the quarterback. You save those hits, and that's what we started to talk about Homer Causey before we went to break. You know, your whole mentality as a quarterback is not to take the hits, to get away from it. But when you, you switch and you play defensive back, everything changes because now you're the guy out there trying to deliver the blow. Your whole mental approach has to change. Not only do you have to come up and make tackles, you have to come up and knock down blockers, and you have big guards and tackles pulling on you from around the corner. So you have to have a completely different mental approach to the game. Well, that's not a good sign for Bacon. That's big Adrian Medley. The junior defensive tackle, we've seen him jump off sides a couple of times, but he's made some plays, and right now he's in some pain and unable to put a lot of weight on that leg or ankle. Big fella's played hard tonight. He has. He's been going up and down that line. And as we discussed a couple of times already, there's there's not a lot of bodies on that Bacon College sideline, so a couple of injuries really makes things difficult for the team in the second half. I was trying to count those guys when they went off after their pregame warm-ups, and, you know, I got to around 30. You know, that's not an exact science because they were way on the other side of the field, but it looks like they had about, you know, 30 guys that they have traveling with them, and that, that's not a lot of football. You think about that, there's a lot of college baseball teams that travel with more than what Bacon has had available, and it's a small school enrollment under... 900 and coach Livingston doing his best in his first year to, to really grow from week one to week two and I think he's seen some progress although it hasn't resulted in points but I'm sure the Warriors want to keep the Tigers out of the end zone here before the break Bowen yards are coming easy for Bowen and he's finally tripped up at about the 15 and he flies forward for a few extra yards Moses Gilbert went low to knock him down he was actually looking downfield. I think he really wanted to throw that one, and then he pulled it down. He couldn't find what he wanted in the secondary, and he just took off. And once he got past that initial wave, the seas just parted. It opened up, and that's a big game. Clock rolling. First and 10 from the 14-yard line. Bowen tripped up in the backfield. Tremendous open field tackle was made in space David by Cooper. David Cooper. Yeah. Louisiana native able to go low to make that stop and he just tripped him up right there and TSU will call a timeout and wisely so facing a second and 14 with 36 seconds to play in the half but you mentioned it just a couple of moments ago we had heavy rain this morning in the Houston area we were unsure what the game time conditions would be like. We have not had any precipitation tonight. It's actually cooled things off, even though it's humid and muggy. But this cool field, things off for Houston. <laughs> that for Houston, agreed. Yeah. This field drained extremely well. It did. It, it's in really, really good shape because you would have thought that there might have been some standing water in areas, but you come here and you look at it, and it, it was. It looked like they were ready for action. It was soccer game here over the weekend, so. The crew will be busy turning this field around after tonight. They're happy no more precipitation has fallen. Tigers would like to find the end zone one more time before the half. Second down, 14. 
Griffin lined up to the left to the lower portion of your screen. Griffin fading to the end zone, leaping high. He made the catch, what and he was catch. out of bounds. What a catch. He was out of bounds, but look at Griffin just elevate and make that catch. He's got big hands as he goes up right here, Bowen, and that's what you want to do when you have a receiver like that. Put it up there. Good play by the DB right there because he dragged him out of bounds. He might have had an that's opportunity right. to get that foot down in bounds, but Moses Gilbert I think you're in, right. made a great play, yanking him out of bounds. May have saved the touchdown. I think he did. You know, I set that play up identifying Griffin because you just had the feeling they were going to try and get him for one more big play. And maybe they'll do that here on third and 14. But what a great effort from the young 6'7 freshman, Derek Griffin. Third and 14. They need to reach the four-yard line. Bowen trying to keep this play alive. Now he's just going to take off. Needs a block, slips out of a tackle, stays on his feet. Inside the 10, he'll be shy of the marker. 18 seconds to play in the half. Corey Fletcher finally wrapped him up. Bowen was doing everything in his power to try and keep that play alive. He was. He rolled it out there, and, and he had a man open in the flats. He didn't want him to have the football. He wanted the touchdown. He kept his eyes downfield, and then he decided to run it, and he, and he got what he could. But, you know, while we have an opportunity, we really need to mention the job the offensive line has done in this one. I mean, they have been opening some gaping holes, either for Bowen or Robinson or whoever's in the backfield at the time. I mean, they're, they're, they're working hard and doing a whale of a job inside. Boy, indeed. Done a fine job. Hey, don't miss the TSU Tigers volleyball team take on Huston Tillotson on September 15th at 6.30 at the HPE Arena. Tickets are on sale now. Log on to TSUball.com today for that volleyball matchup on September 15th. Tigers football team trying to get win number one in the column tonight. And right now they'd like some more points before they go to the break. And they're not going to go for the field goal on fourth and five. They're going to go for the touchdown instead. This is a good opportunity just to work on situations. This is fourth and five. You're inside the 10, and you're right before the half. This is a great situation to work. Griffin man coverage to the left. The pass goes touchdown. to the right instead. Touchdown. It's in the end zone, and it's a touchdown for Mark Edwards. Mark Edwards, the graduate transfer from Tulane. Wide open, and he hit him right on, right on target with that strike. Good ball thrown. Right over the outstretched defender into the arms of Mark Edwards, the 6'1 senior. Used the hands for the reception and the fifth touchdown tonight for TSU. It's Bowen and, and, and Coach John Shannon there. And you had everybody thinking you were going to lob that thing up to Griffin and you go the other way, and, and they really did not cover Edwards on that play. Another warrior down for the time being. So the TSU training staff, which has been assisting Bacon College tonight, has been busy. I hope it's just the fact that these guys are just worn out because you hate to see injuries in a football game. And, and, and we mentioned before, they have to play a lot of plays. And there's Mark Edwards on the sideline. And uh, as we take a look at the drive, because the Tigers really managed to drive well down the stretch. And then the touchdown pass right there from Bowen to Edwards in the corner of the end zone. Young man who already has his degree, but still wanted to play some more football, so he transferred to uh, Texas Southern University. New Orleans, Louisiana native, and you mentioned he played at Tulane and Conference USA, now part of the SWAC. And right now the injured warrior is still being attended to, and again, you hope this young man is okay. Right now he's on his back at about the 12-yard line before TSU can try for the extra point. Five seconds remain here in the first half. It's hard to tell from our vantage point, but it looks like they're checking out the neck or, or the head area almost. Both teams will head to their respective sidelines and medical personnel try and help out the injured Bacon College player. TSU went for it on fourth down. They could have settled for a field goal. They went for the touchdown. It worked out perfectly with Mark Edwards on the receiving end. So Griffin had the 73-yard scoring pass. Tracy Johnson scored from 24 yards out. Mark Edwards 
with a touchdown reception. Jonathan Bowen, the quarterback, has taken it in a couple of times. See if we can identify this injury. It's going to happen on the right portion of your screen as the touchdown took place. And it looks like it's Jeremy Barnes. Yes. Jeremy Barnes, number 58. He's spinning to the inside in a Yeah, it's hard to see what really happened to him after he spun inside, but sometimes you can get, you know, one of those, uh, you, you can stick your neck in there and you can get that stinger, and that's extremely painful, but we're just speculating at this point. He's a freshman out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Central High School. Relatively young team here for Bacon College out of the Central States Football League, the CSFL, if you will. And as we mentioned earlier, they were picked third was Bacon in the conference standings. Well, the medical attention continues. We're going to step out. Five seconds to play in the half. TSU awaiting their extra point, leading 34 to nothing. Uptown Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many. Sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. For the injured warrior, Jeremy Barnes, who was injured on that fourth down touchdown reception by TSU. And you see the coaching staff obviously concerned about their young man, their young freshman. Coach Asbury out there, along with Coach Livingston from Bacon. Almost looks like a drill right there for the helmet, possibly, of Barnes to take that off. They're probably taking off the face mask. Face yeah. mask? Yes. A lot of times, you, you know, you notice, you watch whether it's NFL, college football, whatever, they'll leave the helmet on, and then they'll transport you that way, and then they, but they'll take the face mask off, so. Well, we wait, I'll let you know, Butch, that TSU's had 14 first downs in the first half to seven for Bacon. TSU's run for 179 yards. They've passed for 154. So there's a lot to be positive about to see those numbers coming off last week in the loss to Prairie View where they ran for a buck seven and passed for 184, but the game kind of got away from them late against the Panthers in that Labor Day Classic. Coach Ashbury did make a couple of tweaks coming into this game. He said Derek Griffin would move into the starting lineup, and we felt his presence here in the first half. That young man's done a great job, and I think now we're going to get to see Barnes escorted off the field. We're going to talk more about Derek Griffin as this game unfolds. With time permitting here, he could almost be, I don't want to get too carried away here, but he could almost be kind of a Randy Moss of the SWAC, considering you get a five-star player who comes here for various reasons, 
obviously has the size and frame, unlike most guys that will be defending him or even other receivers in the conference. And if Bowen can do the job of getting the ball in his direction, you get a great feeling he's going to put up some crazy numbers over the course of the season. And the best thing about the whole situation, he, he is so young, he's only going to get better. It, and can you imagine being better than what we've seen tonight? <laughs> I mean, he's getting by right now, understanding the offense on his athleticism. He's been part of the offense. The TSU defense has also done its part tonight. Even though bacon has been able to move the ball for the most part, there have been times where TSU has been disruptive, causing fumbles. Damon King helping out, forcing the fumble. He and Zacchaeus, Bammy Joko. But they've been all over the place. Derek Lyles putting a lot of heat on the quarterback tonight. I mean, they've had a lot of pressure. And there's another fumble. Damon King almost coming up with that one. And then Lyles with a takedown in the backfield. So this defense has come out today, and they, and they have set the tone for this entire ball game. Derek Lyles has been a name that we have mentioned several times, and Jarius Moore. And when you consider you've got a defense that features Darian Claiborne, Bacon has tried to stay away from him. But Lyles and Moore have made it extremely difficult to get anything going offensively, or at least sustain it. Well, they've moved the ball. They've been able to pick up a couple of first downs on certain drives. They haven't been able to finish. Their one field goal try went awry in a high snap. It looked like they were going to have an opportunity on their first drive. They, they went for a 50-yard field goal that fell well short. So while they have not scored, they've had a couple of small opportunities. But the Tigers have certainly capitalized on all of their scoring to the tune of five touchdowns and waiting to kick what would be the fifth extra point. They have played with so much confidence tonight on offense, and we mentioned defense. Amir Bloom also forcing a lot of uh, pressure on that defensive side. But, but as a whole, the team has played with so much confidence tonight. And, and you can tell, you mentioned it earlier, that Coach Asbury wanted this guy, these guys to kind of, you know, bounce off of his emotions and how he felt about this game and how important this was to him. And uh, I think we're seeing that tonight on the field. I think that was a great comment by Coach Asbury. And let's face it, self-evaluation is not easy. And coaches are always trying to find out ways to get better, to motivate their young men. Had he come into practice this week angry and upset and uptight after losing to Prairie View, that would have filtered down very quickly to his young men. He wanted to set the example as positive, upbeat, ready to go to work, clean up their mistakes. And he felt like, to his team's credit, they came into this week saying, hey, I, we know what we did wrong. Right now it's about how do we get better for week two and week three to get those wins. You, you have to be coach slash psychologist because I, we had a guy in college. He would come, and every Wednesday was his day to come and chew people out. And after a while, when you're on the team for two or three years, you start to figure out, well, no matter what we do, he's going to be out here yelling and screaming <laughs> and kicking the bucket over. And, and you just have to kind of get it in your mind. You have to learn how to work it. You have to do that. You can't be yelling and screaming all the time because these guys are smart. They're going to figure that out. They'll figure it out quickly. Offense has figured out some things tonight. Let's take a look at what we have seen with the Tigers, both running and passing. And a lot of it, of course, has started with Jonathan Bowen and also involving some of his, uh, his running backs and receivers tonight. Larry Clark. I mean, we have seen a lot of receivers in this ball game, but Jonathan Bowen has also, not only has he thrown the ball well, he's done a great job of pulling it down and picking up the yardage. He's run for a couple of scores tonight. That's the big tight end right there, Rosenberg with the play. And then I love that play right there. He was going to follow his back, saw that wasn't working, decided to cut it back inside with a nice gain. Again, the zone read, Bowen keeps. There was a penalty on that play. He saw the penalty for being offside, so he kept the football and got a touchdown. Very good decision-making, and sometimes those decisions on the zone read, we're talking about split-second decisions, the read, whether to pitch, whether to keep, or to cut back, or to make the throws, and everything has worked out wonderfully, at least through nearly two quarters. We're still five seconds shy of reaching halftime with the injured Bacon player down and, and being attended to, and, and this is the level of severity of course, is a, a grave concern for the Warriors and their coaches and their players. We're going to take another break, come back, and wrap things up here in our second quarter. It's 34-0 TSU.
French's chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchies. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. Jeremy Barnes out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Boy, boy, she's been down for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. The medical personnel doing their best to make sure everything is done properly. To the stretchers out there and the golf cart as well, but they're taking all the precautions necessary to ensure his safety and, and the ambulance standing by, of course, as well. It's a scary situation. You know, you know it's a part of the game. You know it's a possibility. Injuries are going to happen, but you, you really hate to see that when, when someone, uh, you know, appears to have, like, such a serious injury. You also wonder if maybe Bacon College was going to head back tonight with the bus trip, but if so, this young man would not be part of that. More than likely, he'll be in Houston for some medical observation. They, you can see they're still trying to get that board underneath him where they can raise him up to a stretcher to get him to the cart and then into the ambulance. And, of course, when, when you have an injury like that, it just uh, it affects both sides of the ball, uh, both sides of the sidelines, because both teams can feel, you know, they're all warriors. They're all out there, and when something like this happens, you know, everybody's just pulling for the person to be okay. You can see Dr. Charles McClellan is down on the field now from Texas Southern. And uh, Coach Asbury is still right there along with uh, Coach Livingston from Bacon. And, uh, you know, you, you, just, uh, it's, uh, you hate to see that kind of situation on the field. And he's a big young man, 295 pounds, the freshman. And it might be closer. They're going to try and, of course, strap him on that board before they – take him to the stretcher or the gurney and and you're right it obviously affects these young men they're worried about the the well-being of their teammate and it's not a roster that has a great deal of depth to begin with they played a, a physical game against Lamar and, and when the game got out of hand I mentioned that it was somewhat unusual both coaches at halftime agreed to play 10 minute quarters in the second half it's still finished 66 to 3 Lamar playing in the Southland Conference, and we're an extra point away from this being 35 nothing TSU at the break here tonight. And there's nothing positive when you see someone suffer what appears to be a serious injury, but if there's one uh, good thing is that the training staffs, you know, they deal with this stuff all the time, and they've made so many improvements with how they deal with neck injuries and head injuries. And we mentioned before how they won't take the helmet off. They will unscrew the face mask. And they leave everything like it is until they can transport him somewhere to where they can have experts really, you know, check, check him out and see and try to determine the extent of the injury. Well, you're in the right city when it comes to getting proper medical attention once they can get him to the hospital here in Houston. But uh, right now, a little consolation for the Warriors because... They've lost one of their, their guys for the night, and uh, our thoughts are with him as they do their best to 
get him into that ambulance. And you mentioned earlier they are using the TSU medical people for, right. the, for this game. So it's actually the Texas, Texas Southern trainers and medical people who are out on the field uh, getting him set to be transferred. And you can imagine, he's just dealing with your own players, there's a level of concern and, and precaution and safety. But when you're taking care of, it's like taking care of someone else's kid, yeah. right? When you're babysitting them or, or you're watching the young kids, you want to take extra care and precaution when they're under your responsibility. And I would think the same thing applies for the TSU medical personnel and their training staff to make sure that uh, they can help out the Bacon College Warriors tonight. And the funny thing about it, Bacon actually, you know, they, they made some improvement tonight over last week's game against Lamar. They actually came out offensively and, and looked pretty good. They had a new quarterback, Trey Seward, uh, moving into the starting lineup, and he actually got some things done. Had a couple of nice passing plays. We saw them move the, the football. That was a reception to DeAndre Hood. Came back with one to Everett Davis, and then Mackey did a fine job of running the ball in the backfield. But when you go 0 for 10 on third down conversions like they did last week, to see them come out, especially on that first drive, and pick up two or three first downs, I mean, that, that's improvement. That's a, a positive improvement. They've missed a field goal. They've had another field goal try go awry on a snap, so it's kept them off the scoreboard tonight. And right now their concern is with Jeremy Barnes, the lineman who was injured on what turned out to be a fourth down touchdown. And, uh, you know, your concern is, of course, a, a head issue and, possible concussion or more. That's what the referee is saying right now, that they think it's it's a possible concussion, that he's complaining of having t tingling hands and feet at this point. So they're taking no chances. They're getting him on that board. They're going to put him on the stretcher, uh, move him into an ambulance, and, and like you said, take him to the nearest hospital. It's going to take the assistance of several people to put him on that gurney. TSU has yet to kick their extra point, and then there will be a, a kickoff that more than likely would expire the first half. And halftime will come at the right time for the Warriors, a chance to regroup and a chance for the coaching staff to do their best to well, get their guys back in that right mental focus. Yeah. Their, their coaching staff is to our left, and you mentioned there's two coaches in the booth. They both have been gone now for quite some time and probably down in the field right now getting ready to go into the half. Well, the, you mentioned the concern about a, a teammate, someone that you're in the locker room with, you're in the dormitory with, and, and, and there is concern. At least now they'll have an opportunity to go into the locker room and, and regroup and, and, and play some football in the second half because if you would have to turn around right after this, it, it would be tough. It would be extremely tough. Good point indeed. By the way, just looking ahead for the Tigers on what is next, they're going to be on the road for a couple of weeks, Butch. They're going to go to Arkansas Pine Bluff on the 19th. They will go to Jackson State on the 26th. And they will not be back here at the friendly confines of BBVA Compass Stadium until October 1st when they play Alabama State. Going to Pine Bluff is a big game. It's, it's another uh, conference game. and It's one you want to take advantage of. When they played them here last year, it was one of those games that went right down to the wire. Pine Bluff scored a couple of late touchdowns on, on some missed assignments. And, and so it, it, it's something that they you come out tonight, you play, you, you put 35 points on the board in the first half and th th that's something that can carry you. That momentum can carry with you onto the road because you can take that confidence with you and that's what they're going to be trying to do, especially when they have the type of offensive performance they had tonight. What a heartbreaking loss that was to Pine Bluff last year. Just not enough points, but uh, points have not been a problem tonight. Let's recap the touchdowns for TSU. The uh, first one out of the gates belonged to Jonathan Bowen. It was a 10-yard run. Well, my favorite tonight has to be this one. 73 what? yards up top to Derek Griffin. Beautiful pass. He just laid it out there and he let Derek run underneath and grab it and then it's what he did after the catch. 
You know, he went over to the sideline, cut it back over the middle, and a uh, beautiful, beautiful touchdown play. Tracy Johnson with a nice move, cutting to the inside of the defender to bring this one into the back of the end zone. That was his first touchdown of the year. This was the fourth down toss that Mark went into Edwards. the hands of Edwards. Mark Edwards, and I like what Tracy Johnson did with his body. He was almost like a rebounder going up to get a rebound, and he, he, he walled off the defender, hauled it in. And, but Bowen has really, he has been the catalyst tonight. He has played with so much confidence, and he's moved the ball to a lot of different people. They've gotten a lot of people involved offensively tonight, and, and that can only help them as the season goes on. When you think about the importance of a quarterback, and, and people in this city, they understand it. Texans fans, they've been calling for a quarterback for a number of years. You think of the problems at the University of Texas right now. They're having offensively unable to score points. They haven't been able to get consistent quarterback play. It's so important because uh, there's been a couple of times tonight where it's been third down, 10, maybe uh, even fourth and three, but it's been the poise and confidence of Bowen that's been able to make a play, keep the team on the field, make the right decision, whether it's a run or a pass, to just get a new fresh set of downs and to continue the drive. And you have to uh, credit Coach Asbury with that because where, while Bowen did not make any mistakes last week, he didn't play with a lot of confidence. He didn't really, every time he threw the ball downfield, it was near the sideline where you're trying to protect your guy a little bit. And that was probably a little bit of what was going on. It was his first start. You don't want to throw too much at him. But Coach Asbury goes to practice this week and say, hey, you're still my guy. You know, get back there, learn what's going on, and let's figure this out, and let's get ready for a big game on Friday night. He wanted to see his quarterback grow from last week to now, and I think that mission has been accomplished. And we still have a half of football remaining. In fact, five seconds left here in this second quarter. And the problem, and, and maybe this is a good thing because this lengthy delay necessitated by the severity of the injury puts these guys in a position where they're all warmed up, and then you, you, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to play football again. So. An extra point, probably a kickoff, and that might just about do it before the half. And then these guys can regroup in the locker room and come back out maybe a little bit early off of a halftime discussion and kind of go through their routine to get ready to play. And so, and that's why it's, it's so good that it's so close to the half. And finally they, they have him strapped down, and, and they're taking Mr. Barnes over to the ambulance. And, uh, you know, let, we're, we're all hoping that he's okay. And, you know, it's not really a serious injury. At this point, we, we, we can't tell from this point, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. You hope for the best. You do. Uh, you see that helmet taped down to, to kind of limit the movement. And the fans here giving a round of applause to Barnes as he leaves, including those from Big Cone College out of Oklahoma. There were a couple of Bacon shirts uh, over in the, uh, and you saw him right there. He got the little thumbs up right there saying he's okay. That's a great sign, really great sign. Once he heard the applause, he raised his left hand in the air for a period of time. And right now still taking him towards the ambulance, which is in the end zone, and off to an area hospital to be attended to. And Meanwhile, the Tigers are back on the field waiting to attempt this extra point from Eric Medina. You, you kind of hope Eric Medina was staying loose because you don't want him to pull anything on an extra point. And then he's going to uh, kick off as well, so he will pound one through. Perfectly done. 35 nothing, Texas Southern. I said on the top that, you know, I look at this as a get well game. You know, you can come out and when you score a lot of points, it, it can cure a lot of ills and it can do it in a hurry. It really can. It's almost one of those games you'd like to have at the beginning of your schedule. And, of course, the way things line up for TSU, that Labor Day Classic is such a special event between two old rivals, Prairie View, who tomorrow will be at Texas State in a stiff test playing up in the Sun Belt Conference and against these uh, Texas Southern Tigers. You know, it might be a game that is, is unlike any other as far as some of the SWAC teams go up against some solid competition, but it's a conference game yes. too. And that's, what, and that's one of the, you know, like you said, it's, it's such a great rivalry and it's such a great event, but it, it, it's the first game of the year. And you have a lot of questions to answer, and, you know, on both sides of the ball, and you're trying to find yourselves and you're trying to figure that out, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a process. Yeah, no, you'd much rather start with a game like this. 
So there's Medina, the run up, and he's just going to squib one. It's a chance maybe to run out the clock, but even then, Big Cone won't take it. DeAndre Hood just hit the deck, so that means there will be a play, even though the clock <laughs> kept rolling. There should be a second or two, but I think the officials will have mercy and yeah. just send everybody to the locker room. I think they're ready to get to the locker room and then start this thing over again in the second half. No one is arguing, so a strong first half from the Texas Southern Tigers, a 35-0 lead over Bacon College. And uh, right now the Tigers allowing Bacon to go to the locker room first. Hopefully we'll have a chance to hear from Coach Asbury before the break. Nick Strong patrolling the sidelines tonight and maybe a little different conversation with Coach Asbury than it was a week ago. Even though that first half was very competitive last week, the final score wasn't indicative of how competitive, of course, the first no. half was. It was 10-3 at the half last week, and, and I, it should have been 7-3 because uh, TSU had a late interception that actually went through a guy's hands, popped up, and after that Prairie View got a field goal. So it ended up being 10-7 at the half, but they really, the Tigers really, really had a fine defensive effort in that first half. So uh, if you look at the scores, it's really not indicative of what happened in the first half, not by a long shot. But it's good to see like some of the same defensive players that played so well last week are stepping up and doing the same thing again this week because we had guys like Raheem McMorris. He was a factor last week, and, and I know the score got out of hand late, but he was all over the place making plays. So was Jarius Moore. We mentioned Jamal Lucas. All those guys showed up last week and again this week. Thirty-five nothing, Texas Southern with the lead at the half. And we're going to hear momentarily from head coach Daryl Asbury, Nick Strong, down on the sideline. 35 to 0 going into the half. What about those adjustments you made in practice this week? Are you seeing them on the football field? Well, we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing some adjustments. We still look like we're, we're kind of off at certain series and some on offense and defense. Uh, we just need to get on track. I want to see a crisp football game and we're not Chris like I want to see us right now. Coach going into the locker room we did see there was a warrior down on the field can you talk about his progress or talk about what happened down there? Well he, he got up and he moved and then he collapsed right there so uh, we don't know if it's a concussion or, or what they were just taking uh, very cautious about how they move him around um, but we pray that he's fine and uh, we're going to keep his family and his team in our prayers. Thanks a lot coach good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right. You're watching the TSU Sports Network here on Root Sports. We'll be right back right after this. Uptown Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But Capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away. Define the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about men, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together.
in the French's chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchies. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. Commemoration down on the field with the Ocean of Soul Band performing at the half here at BBVA Compass Stadium. Over the first half, the TSU Tigers with a 35-0 lead over Bacon College with Butch Olsendor. I'm Brett Dolan, Nick Strong down on the sidelines, and Butch, it was a half marred by that injury at the end, but really for TSU, as far as they're concerned, offensively and defensively, everything fell into play. If you're TSU, you'd like to bring these guys back again next week, but you can't do that, but it's really all about execution, and the Tigers executed tonight. Everything they did offensively worked, and defensively, they were extremely aggressive as we take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Well, Bacon College was able to move the ball a little bit. Remember, this was a team with just three first downs all of last week, and they had a couple of opportunities where they moved the football, but, boy, when the Tigers got it, it was instant offense. Larry Clark on the misdirection, the reverse, picks up a nice game. And then what about the first half Jonathan Bowen had? Because last week he didn't make a lot of mistakes, but it wasn't like this week. He looked like a different guy to Rosenberg for the completion. He looked so confident and poised in this game. Couple of touchdowns on the ground. In fact, he carried for 75 yards, but he also threw for 154. So you talk about a dual threat quarterback, that's one of the two touchdowns that Bowen scored in the first half. But defensively, every time that it looked like the Warriors made a play, there was somebody in a maroon jersey. Tigers brought the heat defensively. Derek Lyles, he lived in their backfield during the first half. Big number 94 made a lot of plays in the backfield. And they just kept on hitting and kept on hitting. There's Daryl Robinson. He ran hard in the first half. Robinson had a nice first half. And this was my favorite play. Going up top, a big play. 73 yards to Derek Griffin. A little individual effort at the end. And he's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Young man from Terry High School. And boy, was that an exciting play. Bowen kind of cranked it loose down the middle. And Derek ran underneath it, hauled it in for a big score. And then right here, Austin Watts near the sidelines. I talked about how the Tigers have so many receivers, it's tough to get them all in the game, but they try to do it. And how about Bowen? His decision making in the first half was excellent. How about that one? Under pressure, floats it deep, and Tracy Johnson came up with a great catch in the corner for the touchdown. You talk about coming back for the football, that's what Tracy Johnson did. And then Derek Lyles again. Yeah, how about that? Five tackles. It felt like he was in the backfield a lot. And the Warriors at times had a hard time just holding onto the football. He looks like somebody's giving him the snap count because he's in that backfield a lot. Seward, though, had a couple of opportunities to get his team into position to score. They missed a field goal. They botched the snap. And there was the late touchdown to Mark Edwards with five seconds to go in the first half. So here's your halftime stats. And of course, they're going to be dominated by TSU. But 333 yards total offense. It's the balance, though, that impresses me between running and passing. And, and that's something they wanted to come out and do tonight. Last week, they did not run the football well. You can see they have 179 yards tonight. 333 total yards. So they're getting a complete effort from offense and defense in this game. And that's why they're up 35 nothing. 35 nothing. 
over Bacon College. And again, the Tigers trying to get that first win of the year, but also the first win in a long time. They started 5-1 and one last year. They had some heartbreaking losses down the stretch, so they finished 5-6. and six. So to get a win tonight under any circumstances would be a great way to begin to turn this thing around. And then you start to get win two and win three, but you can't concentrate on that until you get that first one. Well, and the they way. know they could have easily have come up with a winning season last year. We did a couple of games that were extremely close that they lost right down the stretch, and so they had their starting running back injured. That played a big part. Tonight we saw them going a long way to kicking off this season on the right foot. But it's so important to improve between week one and week two. It's kind of a cliche in football when you see the biggest step forward. You've had fall camp. You finally get to go up against another team. And then you find out how tough this game is. You go back to the drawing board. You look at game film. You game plan. You prepare. And that's where Coach Asbury and his staff really should get a lot of credit because it seems like they've cleaned up a lot of things. And even though Coach told Nick Strong at half, he still felt like there were a lot of things to work on. I think he might be picking this well, that, a little bit. That's what the good teams do. They take that during the week. You clean up whatever went wrong. You come out and you execute well, and that's exactly what they did tonight so far. Yeah. Hard to find many faults to this point. We'll be interested to see what the second half has in store for the Tigers because they might be able to play a lot of guys. Big Cone just doesn't have much roster depth, less than 40 players here. But there's going to be some Tigers that are going to get some playing experience. No doubt about it. We're going to see a lot of Tigers we haven't seen. We didn't get a chance to see last week. They're going to come out there, and they're going to have a chance to do well, and they should because they're going to be on game film, and the coaches are going to get to evaluate them. So it's going to be a good second half. 35 nothing at the break. We'll step aside, come back with more at the half, get ready for second half action from BBVA Compass Stadium in a moment. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Hello, I'm Alan Helfman, Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Miss Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. Alan is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. We see the Tigers find the end zone five times in the first half. Part of a 35-0 lead over Bacon College as we get ready to start third quarter action. A rare Friday night game here at BBVA Compass and after heavy rains throughout the morning and the afternoon in the Houston area, we've really had nice weather, cool conditions. And of course the Tigers an impressive first half, and we talked about the balance between rushing and passing. So, Butch, what do you think the, the goals and the objectives are right now for the second half of the Tigers? The number one goal right off the top is not to get anyone hurt. Now, of course, you can't control that. That's an intangible. But you're going to see him pull some of his starters rather quickly. I would be surprised if they did more than one series in the second half. Now, you do have a young quarterback, so you want to get him as much live action as possible. And they may start Jonathan Bowen for the first series of the second half, and they may not. But the main thing is to stay away from injuries. You want to run your offense. You want to give some of your young players a chance to, to get on tape so you can see exactly what they bring to the table. You saw the shot of Averion Hertz, who was warming up on the sideline in case he's called upon to see a lot of action here in the second half. And that's just what we discussed 
at the break, a chance to get some valuable playing experience for a lot of guys who maybe didn't see a lot of action last week when it was really scramble mode to try and come back and find a way to beat PV. Avion Hertz actually got some action in the second half, late third quarter, early fourth quarter, and he did an excellent job. I mean, he really did. He, he came on and he actually made a couple of plays. He led the touchdown drive that the Tigers had last week. So I would imagine we'll see a lot of number 18 again tonight in the second half. I thought he looked pretty good at times. Certainly yes. a big arm. I know the completion percentage wasn't huge, 3 of 9, 75 yards, although he did get the touchdown, but uh, there's some raw talent in that young man. He did a good job of finding his people downfield. Sometimes when you get forced out of the pocket like that and you have to scramble around, it's hard to pick up your guy down the field. Well, he did an excellent job of finding receivers in at that game. Now, the other side of that is he probably wasn't going against the same defense that That's Jonathan true. Bowen went against. You see Coach Asbury coming out for the second half? We talked about the fact last week, Butch, that they played 10 minute quarters in the second half and the announcement was just made. We see athletic director Charles McClellan and that decision has been made. We will play 10 minute quarters here in the second half. So I think for Bacon and uh, some of the injuries they've sustained and, and their depth, their lack thereof, that's that's a, a good decision. Well, they know it's a challenge for them to come in and play a TSU or like a Lamar like they did last week. They don't have the numbers. They don't have the bodies. And this is a, a good idea for both sides, for both teams, actually. Tigers get to look at some young players, and these guys get to get out of here in, in one piece. Tigers will start the second half with the football. We saw Mark Edwards with a touchdown reception at the end of the first half, and he will return the opening kickoff. Moses Gilbert tracked him down, so TSU with the football. So now the decision, we'll see if it's Bowen or Hertz who leads this offense on the field here in our second half. It's Bowen, and I, I would imagine this will be his last series of the ball game. I, I can't imagine he'd be out there much longer, but it looks like the starting unit is back out for the Tigers. Malik Cross in at wide receiver. You can see Darrell Robinson in the backfield. And, of course, number 80. Check out that size difference on the sideline. If we can get a shot of that a little <laughs> later. Look at that at the bottom <laughs> of the screen. That's 6-7 against 5-something. Instead, they run to Darrell Robinson right up the middle for a couple of yards into the Bacon defensive line. Number 21 is Moses Gilbert on the corner, and I tell you what, that's a fine play right there on Robinson, but Moses Gilbert is out here on Griffin, and the size difference is incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> it's so tempting just to throw the ball in Griffin's direction every single time. Gilbert is listed at 5'9". There, there is no way he's 5'9". Five 5'9 nine. Five nine against 6'7". Up for some press coverage there in case he can get a little pop on Griffin. Instead, the pass is flipped in the direction of Malik Cross. Cross to the boundary. Knows where that first down marker is and steps out just past the 40, past the pylon. He's got some really quick feet. He did a good job of avoiding a couple of tackles there before he stepped out of bounds. But this is just a play that worked really well in the first half. Malik Cross coming back. They get a couple of blockers out in front. He slips the tackle, and it's a nice gain for the Tigers. And it's not just 10 minute quarters here in the second half. They kept that clock rolling even though he went Cross out of stepped out of bounds. First and 10 for TSU. Robinson running off the right side of the line. There was a marker down maybe in the area of Bacon being off sides. We'll see what the penalty is all about as Robinson, the junior out of Mississippi, rushes again. Deshaun Miles on the stop, and of course, there's our referee tonight who's been very busy, Scott Johnson. Three of the defense, penalties declined, second down. Man, they've been offside, uh, offsides a lot tonight. That's got to be the fourth or fifth time. That was just lining up offsides. We've seen them anticipate the snap count and jump several times. Once when TSU scored a touchdown. Remember, 53 doesn't appear on the roster, so we can't give him credit or praise. The and guy is all over the field playing <laughs> his tail off, and we can't even say it. And he's probably happy we can't identify him after the penalty. Robinson runs again, good blocking. He actually runs through the blocking, runs inside the 40. Another helmet comes flying off for the Warriors. Zane Leach there on the stop. 
Well, you got the, that running clock because this is the time in the ball game where you, you can see the Tigers are bigger, stronger, faster. And after this many, this many minutes, it starts to take a toll when you get in the second and, half. And I'm not making levity of the situation when I say these Warriors need better chin straps. I don't know how many times. It has to be eight or nine where the guy's lost his helmet and had to head off the side of the field for a play. First drive of our third quarter with the quarters shortened to 10 minutes in Bowen. Just racing for another 11 yards. That football kicked loose, but I think it came after he hit the turf. Bowen, who ran for 79 yards on 10 carries in the first half, runs for another 11 before Roy Hodge, the third, will bring him down with a little shoulder roll. Just an option play right here, and he decides to keep it instead of pitching it to Robinson. Just cuts it up inside. He did that a couple of times in the first half. and He sees that little gap, and then he takes it right away. Bowen looking to throw, and he has all kinds of time. Now he'll finally just bury one of the feet of Cross and try to keep that play alive. And once he ran towards the boundary and ran out of room, he just threw one of the feet of he Malik Cross. He took a look deep because he had Griffin going down deep against that 5'9 guy, Gilbert. And uh, he took a look at it, but they actually brought the safety over. So they were helping Moses uh, Gilbert over the top. And Bowen, that was a great read because he saw that he had the help and he decided just to throw the ball away. So second and ten for the Tigers. Griffin lined up to the bottom of your screen. The big 6'7 wide receiver who had a couple of catches for 93 yards. It's a carry instead for Daryl Robinson. He'll pick up another first down as he carries inside the 15-yard line. And Eric Brown, the local kid, the Houston product, on another stop. He led the team in the first half in tackles, and there's another. And that means if your safety's making tackles, the Tigers are deep in the secondary. Oh, that, that offensive line is doing a whale of a job. You know, Jaleel Mathis Ellis, the preseason all-swag player, Adrian Jackson, Corey Griner, all these guys, Glenn Jackson, they're just, they're just driving them way off the line of scrimmage. I mean, they're, just, they're pushing them back. And those five guys up front go 300, 315, 315, 290, and 330. The 330 is the freshman Marvis Brown, the right tackle. Another offsides, and you have to blow the play dead there unabated so one of the Tigers doesn't get smashed with the play continuing. Offside for 53 of the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That's our infamous number 53. And I was warned by the folks at Lamar who hosted... Bacon College last week, they said, by the way, there was a 53 all over the field. He wasn't on the roster. Good luck with that. And uh, 53 has been involved in a lot a couple of times, though, not in the way he would like on this drive. So it's first and goal from the eight-yard line. Bowen, he's rushed for two touchdowns already today. Three. He's gone for the hat trick. Touchdown, TSU. You know, Coach Asbury could not have scripted this better because this is how he wanted to see them come out of the locker room. Bowen just keeps off the zone read, goes right up the middle. Nice job. Keeps, has a couple of blockers in front of him. Takes it on in for the touchdown. And another extra point coming from Eric Medina. He will pound one through the uprights, and it is good. 42-0 TSU. We'll step aside and come back to BBVA Compass Stadium. It's been all Tigers tonight.
find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many. Sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work. Together. The Tigers raced out to a 35-0 lead at the half. That man, the quarterback, Jonathan Bowen, operating the offense to precision, both on the ground and through the air. And he just took it in on the ground for his third rushing touchdown in the first drive of our second half. And that's probably the last time we're going to see him except sitting down smiling on the sideline like that because that drive couldn't have been scripted any better for Coach John Shannon and uh, Coach Darrell Asbury's offense because they came down there and they took it all the way down, got the touchdown on the board. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of backups from this point on. Well, Butch, one of the mysteries has been solved. Number 53 is Mark Carter for Bacon College, so he can no longer go unnoticed. Okay, Mark, so you better stop jumping off sides, buddy, because now <laughs> we know who you we are. We can identify you. Mark Carter. We had a real lengthy delay with five seconds to go in the second quarter when Jeremy Barnes, a freshman, had a head injury and uh, the medical personnel very cautious with him before they finally got him to an ambulance right before the half. So it was a, a lengthy delay. We had an extra point and a kickoff before halftime. And it's one of the reasons why we are playing 10-minute quarters here in the second half shortened a bit just as it was last week for this small school out of Oklahoma and Medina to kick off again with the Tigers leading 42 to nothing and a return opportunity for Landon Bird Weaver and he wishes he didn't have that chance he was planted shy of the 15 yard line Demetrius Johnson with a huge stop got down there in a hurry and made the stop but this last drive by TSU Perfect drive, Darrell Robinson right there. It went eight plays, 70 yards. Robinson ripping off a big portion of it right there up the middle. Eight plays, 70 yards in three minutes and 54 seconds before Bowen takes it in for his third touchdown on the night. He's done a great job of deciding when to run tonight. They've called a couple of uh, run plays, but also he's looked around while he's in the pocket and pulled it down a few times and came up with a couple of nice gains. And it seems so obvious and easy when things work out, but it's not always the case. It's, it's the precision by which he's operated the offense that is uh, probably belied the level of difficulty. And now with some second team players in there, we're seeing some movement already. Been a tough night for Bacon. They commit a penalty before their first offensive play of the second half coming out of a sideline situation. And last week, as I mentioned earlier, they had more penalty yards at Lamar than they did total yards. They, they gave up, what, 525 yards in that game. It, it, was, it was incredible. It really was. And yet Trey Seward has is, is looked good at times tonight. And Roderick Mackey with the carry. Mackey trying to head towards the boundary where he's popped out of bounds. We've been calling his name a lot tonight, and we get the stats at halftime, and there's a guy named Demarius Miles who looks like he was credited with all of Mackey's carries. But, but Mackey is listed as 22 in your program. And the senior tailback lost two on that play. He was popped hard out of bounds. Zacchaeus Bammy Joko right there on the stop to kiss him pretty hard before he knocked him out of bounds. So a penalty on the first play before the first play took place. A loss on a running play, so it's second down and 17 for the Warriors. And if you're just tuning in, they're out of the Central States Football League, the CSFL. Muskogee, Oklahoma, less than 1,000 enrollment. So about 120th of the enrollment here tonight playing football against TSU. Offense. You see, some of these penalties we're about seeing. Half the distance to the goal, second down. Some of these penalties we're seeing right now are just the result of being fatigued. And I, I think that's what's happening to this big, big cone offense. Obviously, physical mistakes happen when you're fatigued, but mental mistakes as well. And that's part of these delay of games and just not being able to get the place off in time. And even though this drive started at the 13, now it's Seward taking the snap in his own end zone. Trying to get rid of the football, and his pass was thrown towards the boundary intended for Everett Davis. 
but unable to hold it in. And it'll be third and long. Jerry is more kind of like in the neighborhood right there for TSU. He's had a fine game tonight. We've, we've called his name out a lot, but I'm sure they're starting to filter in some substitutes on defense also. I see uh, Jamal Lucas still out there. Jerry is more is still out there. So they have some of the starters still on the field. Dondre Dobbins, Amir Bloom. So this could be their final series of the game. Wouldn't be surprised if Bacon just ran the football here. And they will heave one instead down the left sideline. The receiver, Dunham's, was popped out of bounds. So he was really never in danger of being able to be in play. And that's fourth down. So he. That was a mistake by the receiver because he did not run a very good route. He was way too close to the sideline. All the defensive back had to do was just jam him. And he pushed him out of bounds right there. You can't come back in, so the play was over. They actually had something going on there because they had a little one-on-one -on -one coverage over there, but it wasn't a really good effort by that receiver. And Malik Cross will stand at the Warriors' 42-yard line. So he's hoping TSU will have great field position, and maybe he can break a big one because the punter, Blake Pierce, now running for his life. There's a flag down. Pierce just throws this one up for grabs, and it falls incomplete. TSU almost better off letting that ball fall than picking it off. Looked like there was a player running on late. A substitution infraction. But there was a Tiger ready to block a potential punt, and Pierce had nothing to do except just to try and run and throw the football away. Clyde Lee in the backfield early. Substitution infraction, offense. The penalties decline. First down, TSU. Looks like it was Clyde Lee in the backfield. We'll take a look at it right here. Tigers come out with a full out rush. Clyde Lee broke scot free, had a chance to get the punter in the end zone for the safety, could not make the play. And he just, well, can you say, Gerald, you premium? Oh, I was going to say, the <laughs> you beat me to it. He just threw that thing straight up like that. First thing, goal. For Texas South. So Texas Southern takes over on downs at the three-yard line, and Avion Hurts now will operate the offense. Not a bad, bad place to start from, the three. Let's see if the Tigers can answer with an immediate touchdown, and it's Daryl Robinson finding the end zone, and it makes it 48-0 TSU. Well, Daryl Robinson was one of our players to watch in the game, and, boy, that's just great blocking. He turned the corner, and there was no one there. I mean, he, he like, where's the defense? Robinson's in for the touchdown. His first touchdown of the season. And Eric Medina lines up for yet another extra point, and he will pump one through the uprights, and it is good with 4.38 to play here in our third quarter. So the Tigers take over on downs at the three-yard line. One play, they find the end zone, and now Bacon will get the football back. We talked a lot about Daryl Robinson early in this game, mainly because of his running style. It's a young man, and I said it before, when he touches the football, he does not get cheated. I mean, he knows what to do with it. He turns it north and south. You're not going to get this guy going too far east and west. And uh, he's had a very productive night tonight. Taking a look at the touchdown again. And like you said, he was almost in the end zone before he was touched. I don't want to pick nits. It was more like three yards and two seconds than <laughs> it was seven yards and eight seconds. But the result was the same. A touchdown for TSU. A one-play scoring drive. How about <laughs> <Yes>. that? <laughs> and the Tigers, after losing to PV 38-11 to in the Labor Day Classic, enjoying tonight. And There's there. Mr. Robinson on the bench. And... Uh, Good job, young man. I mean, he came out there, got his opportunity tonight, and really delivered. He's made the most of his chance. Man with the biggest workout tonight has been Medina. Although I say that as kick takes a U-turn and goes out of bounds. So instead of pinning the Warriors deep, we'll mark it at the 35, and that's where Bacon will take over. So better field position than their previous drive, where they started at the 13 and then had Two different delay of game penalties and a negative running play before the punt went awry on fourth down. 
We were talking about Robinson over there resting on the bench. He had 47 yards at the halftime, so you throw in that three-yard touchdown, he's right at 50 for the game, and he may get a little more work in the second half because they have a lot of backs. Uh, they'd like to get some work, and he's one of the guys they'd like to see. Seward on the offense, back on the football field. Bacon had a shot at a 50-yard field goal earlier that fell well short of the uprights, landed at the goal line, and then another makeable field goal try in which the snap was high and wide of the holder. Otherwise, they could be on the board right now. They're being blanked by this TSU defense, and there's a lot of Amir Bloom. Amir Bloom? Zacchaeus, Bami Joko also there for the Tigers. And uh, like I said, this football can be fun in these type of games. <laughs> you can really get out there and, and make an impact. And you see Tigers flying around all over the place. They have some of the reserves in now on defense. So some experience for some of these guys on defense. We're still seeing some of the starters in there. Maybe, as we say, potentially the, the last drive. Tigers coming after Seward. Puts that ball up for grabs, and there was a late marker that came flying in. Thought maybe Archie Rice had a chance for a pick. A female official part of our crew tonight. Defense, number 33. 15-yard penalty, first down. 15-yard pass, first penalty is the... Jarius Moore. We can't see it there. The penalty obviously occurred earlier in that play to draw the flag. Gives the Warriors, though, a first and 10 up at their own 48-yard line. Inside four minutes to play here in our third quarter. Quick pass was nearly picked. It ended up in the hands of DeAndre Hood. Spinning catch away from DeAndre Dobbins, who finally made the stop from his safety position. Nearly Boy, picked. 27, Jamal Lucas. He just about had himself six. He was a half step late, and uh, that ball was just drilled in there by Seward. Nice play there, but boy, that was almost a TSU turnover. He had a great read on it, but the Warriors on the march. Chance to get their first score of the day. Another pass in the direction of Hood. Demetrius Johnson. Boy, he, he's up there tight on the coverage. The Memphis, Tennessee native who had five tackles last week in that opening game. We've called his name several times today, and that's just a great open field tackle. Wrapping up, throwing down, no further yards after contact. If anything, he went backwards. Not the deepest penetration yet, but the Warriors on the march. Their second drive in the second half. Trey Seward has operated the offense all night long. He was listed as the second quarterback coming into the game tonight, but he's taken all the snaps, and that time his pass was right in the arms of Hood, who could not hold on, and maybe that's a reflection of the shot he took after the previous catch. No doubt about that, because that ball is right on the money, and it actually got all the way into his chest. I don't know if it ever hit his hands, and it comes popping out right there. So that, that kind of sums up the night for Bacon. This is really their first drive since the first quarter. After just three first downs all of last week and three points, they got off to a better start, but the second and third quarters Belonged to TSU until this point, and then Seward just didn't know what to do with the football, and he kind of buried one at the feet of his tailback, Roderick Mackey, in his fourth down. And this is certainly four down territory, a little bit out of the range of their place kicker, Blake Pierce. Well, he had it wide open coming out of the backfield right there, and I think the ball just slipped out of his hands. He was trying to swing it around over to him, and of course they're going to go for it on fourth down. It's uh, 49 zip. They're pretty, it would be another 50-yard attempt if he tried to kick it again. So two receivers to each side of the formation. They need to reach the 25. Quick pass into the flat. 
How about that open field tackle? Homer Causey. Homer Causey, the former quarterback, just laid out DeAndre Hood. You know, you have to have a different mentality to play defense. Well, it's hard to believe this is a quarterback's mentality right there. Homer Causey coming up on the play, attacking the ball, and then driving the receiver into the ground. DeAndre Hood is going to be looking around for that number four. What a hit from Causey, and the Tigers will take over on downs at their 28. And Hertz, who came out to run the offense in the previous drive, had that one play, three yard scoring drive. And you see the running back to his right, that's Matthew Butler, a freshman out of Baton Rouge, who's had a couple of carries so far tonight. Instead, it's Larry Clark, the third, and he was planted. And we finally got to give who? credit to Mark Carter. You got to give that big young man a lot of credit because he's still playing hard late in the third quarter of a 49 nothing game and he breaks free and gets in the backfield and makes a big stop. I mean, that's uh, 53. I'm glad we finally found out who he is. Hurts, meanwhile, he's a Houston kid out of Kilgore Community College. Three for nine through the air. A couple of rushes last week against PV as he came on in relief as he's doing tonight, but this time with a big lead. And a pass to Austin Watts. Watts able to shed a tackler. Now trying to show off some speed. And he was finally tripped up when he looked like he was going to get loose. It was Tabaha, the freshman corner, who finally brought him down. Well, they're, they're not hurting at the skill position. And there's Austin Watts shaking off the tackler. And then turns on the Jets. He's trying to reverse himself all the way across the field. And big uh, Mark Carter was so happy that he just fell down right there. And he did not have to chase him <laughs> any further. <laughs> Third and four for TSU nearing the one-minute mark of our third quarter. And Butler drops immediately by Corey Fletcher, the junior defensive end. And one thing we haven't seen tonight is Corey Carter, who might be as good of a punter as anybody in the country. That's what happens when it's 49 nothing, And now on fourth and six, if there's any NFL scout here, they're finally going to see Mr. Carter do his thing. That's unbelievable. We've got 45 seconds left in the third quarter, and he's going to be <laughs> punting for the first time in this ballgame. Now, last week, Carter punted five times for a 44-yard average, and that's not him. That's not good enough because <laughs> last year he led the nation in yards per punt. See if he can let one go. It's a line drive. If this one bounces, it'll be a big gainer, but instead it's collected by Everett Davis and almost tackled immediately. And maybe one more play before we switch sides here in our fourth quarter with the Warriors taking over after getting the stop. Eric Mitchell was the first guy down the field covering the point. Made a nice, nice stick right there. Uh, I'm sure somebody had to wake Corey Carter up on the sideline and say, hey, guy. <laughs> he goes, oh, okay. At least it wasn't, who was it, Thurman Thomas in the Super Bowl that couldn't find his he helmet? Lost his helmet. Yes, he lost his helmet. <laughs> Or his misplaced form. If he was playing the Patriots, there'd be espionage involved. They would have been involved in hiding it or cutting off the headsets to the press box. There's Coach Lawrence uh, Livingston. And uh, like you mentioned earlier, it's his first year here at Bacon. And, and he, he and his staff have been working hard tonight. You know, they only had two coaches in the booth and two coaches on the sideline. Now they're down to one in the booth. You know, they have to play some of these games to pay some of the bills. They're not different than a lot of the yeah. smaller schools, whether it's FCS or FBS. Sometimes you got to go get the uh, the paydays as Jamal Lucas makes the catch. And, and those games always aren't pretty. And this has been all TSU tonight. We'll switch sides. Head to the fourth quarter. 49-0 the Tigers with the lead. Hello, I'm Alan Helfman, Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Ms. Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. 
Ellen is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. Uptown Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. This has become a more physical game as we have progressed. This Tigers defense swarming to the football. Trying to keep the Bacon Warriors off the scoreboard as we start the fourth quarter. It'll be Warriors football, but they're going to have to march all the way from the right side of your screen to the left if they're to get their first touchdown tonight. Trailing Texas Southern 49 to nothing. Taking a look at some of the defense in there, the Tigers have substituted. You have some replacements in there. Number 30, Archie Rice getting some action. We see Bammy Joko in there also at number six. Seward still trying to attempt some passes, and that one was tightly defended by Archie Rice. And here but comes a, a late down. flag, yes. It's a third and 14 play to start our fourth quarter. Pass interference, defense, ball be placed at the spot of the foul, it's an automatic first down. And our referee who's been busy tonight, Scott Johnson, has stopped identifying players guilty of the infractions. <laughs> well, that had to be Archie Rice. He did. He broke on the ball and might have been just a step early. I don't know if the receiver had a chance to catch oh, yeah, that one. That's though. too bad because he didn't have to make that hit. That no, ball was wide of the mark and was not going to be close. Instead of a fourth down, it's first and ten for Bacon. Junior quarterback Trey Seward is given a fresh set of downs. Another marker comes in in the area of holding, and how about that open field helicopter tackle? The, the North Shore, Shore kid yes. in stereo. <laughs> holding number 74 of the offense. It's ten yard penalty. Still first down. That's Talon Sapa Hoodle. And I won't make you spell that, but Sepahoodle guilty of the holding infraction. But you talk about an open field tackle. Jarius Moore came in, went low, helicopter the quarterback to the turf. And he's got one speed. It doesn't matter what the score is or what point of the game you're, you're in. He's got one speed, and that's what you're going to see. And he came up there, and what a tackle. He, he nailed it. He doesn't even get credit for that. They accept the penalty to make it first and 20. He'll get to see it on film, however. And the Tigers pursuing, and this time it's Demetrius Johnson chasing Seward. Demetrius Johnson playing well tonight also. We've called out his name several times. He had five tackles last week against PV, the Memphis, Tennessee kid. And there's so many Texas natives, of course, on TSU. But every once in a while, you see a guy like Homer Causey who's from Atlanta or Johnson from Tennessee and a few Louisiana kids, as we well know. Matthew Butler from, from Baton Rouge. Joshua Brooks, another from New Orleans. We saw the touchdown from Mark Edwards, the New Orleans guy via Tulane. And that one's up for grabs. That one's picked. This Don is going to be a score. Dobbins. Dondre Dobbins, the Louisiana native with the pick six for TSU. There is a marker down, and this could be in the area of maybe rushing or roughing the passer. We'll find out. If it is, that's a shame because he was sitting on that one. Personal foul, roughing the passer. 
number 97 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Mrs. King, if you're watching tonight, that's your young man, Damon. And you could just see it was Seward getting up very slowly after that pick six, and the marker was at his feet, so you knew he was probably roofing the passer. Damon King on the late hit, but you, but you got to like that play from Dondre Dobbins because he was back there. He was the safety guy on that play, and he just was waiting for it. He knew he was coming with the ball, and he timed it out perfectly. Did a fine job breaking on the ball. And Coach Ashbury was saying very politely, do not hit the quarterback yes, uh, when you're up 49 nothing. He had some words for Mr. King. Everything's a teachable, coachable moment, and even in a 49 nothing game. And finally, I think Bacon going back to the ground, and it is Roderick Mackey running into the big arms of Caleb Jenkins. There's a Detroit, Michigan kid as we talk about Tigers from outside the region. One of the Tigers lost his hat, Bama Joko. He'll hail it to the sideline. This is one of those games, though, where you can get something out of it, even though it's a blowout. And what you get is that confidence and that momentum going into the next week. I mean, this they've come out and they've executed. Like It doesn't matter who the competition is. You still have to execute, and they have tonight. You mentioned it earlier, though. This is one of those games where you just don't want to see anybody else get hurt. Yeah. That pass was nearly picked by Dobbins. Again, the only reason it wasn't, it was a bad pass. It was too high. Otherwise, he had a beat on it. He had his pick six called back, and he wanted his INT. He wanted it back. He might have had it right there. You'll see he's sitting on the play again. Watch Dobbins in the center of your screen. Coming in, he broke on the football, <laughs> and I tell you what, he got his hands on it. Watch You're his reaction at the end, and, and we just missed it. He, even as the ball went through his hands, he turned around as if to say, how did I not catch it? Well, they, they you know, when you do your play study during the week, they know what they're going to run out of certain formations. So he's over there sitting on it, waiting for him to run that slant. He just had a good running start. Third down and nine for Seward, and they'll go to the ground and try and pick it up, and there's just nothing available there. Caleb Jenkins, 6'1", 300 pounds, able to get a couple of tackles on this drive, and now it's fourth and ten, and the punting unit will come on for the Warriors. Keyshawn Parrish helping out on the play, coming in there, a big fella. Matthew Butler hoping for a chance to return this punt off the leg of Blake Pierce. Just getting the right men in the game has been such an issue on every single punt for Bacon. They ran a couple of guys in, took somebody off. Looks like they've got the proper number. Yep. And then illegal procedure. Another penalty. They jumped on the line. Butch, they're almost 100% on punts. Start. Number 26 of the offense, it's five yards, still fourth down. You know, you hate to go through a preseason camp and then play a game and another week of practice and have these mistakes. These are the mistakes you want to clean up early in a season so that you can get down to just playing football and not suffering so many self-inflicted wounds. Exactly. And I think they were actually trying to snap it earlier and the, and the center didn't snap it and the guard just jumped. I think the longer they wait, the more likely they are to jump. So Pierce just needs to snap this and kick it. Nothing fancy. Get it? Kick it. Whoa. Easier said than done. He got it. He didn't kick it. And that's the second time the Tigers will get the football on downs because Pierce couldn't get it off. And Clyde Lee Clyde came Lee. racing in. Again. He TSU. almost got the safety that's on the right. other end. TSU will have great field position when you come back. 6.09 to play. It's 49-0 Tigers. Define the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about men. Sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together.
49-0 TSU. Nick Strong has been patrolling the sidelines. Some tigerific. All right. Go ahead, Nick. It's all Welcome you. Welcome down to the sidelines. I'm Nick Strong, and I've got some special guests, some tigerific special guests, Miss TSU and Mr. TSU, Channing Briggs and Brian Eastman. Introduce yourself and tell us where you're from. Hello, my name is Channing Briggs. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I'm a senior majoring in broadcast journalism. Oh, wow. So you need to be down here on the sidelines with me next year after your reign. How about you, Eastman? How you guys doing? My name is Brian Eastman. I'm from San Francisco, California, a business management major. All right, so I used to live in San Jose, you know, so the Bay Area. Let's talk a little about you, Miss TSU. What kind of inspired you to run for, you know, Miss TSU? Um, personally, my mother, she always wanted me to run for Miss USA, and it, it really is for me, it was a boost of confidence, something that I've never done. I've never had a leadership position this big. I've always been behind the scenes, so this is like a dream come true for me. Now, let's talk about the educational side of things. You're majoring in broadcast journalism. You look like an anchor here on the sideline. Brett and Butch, you may want to watch. I mean, we got some future sideline reporters here. Talk about your major and how much the uh, School of Communications means to Texas Southern and you. Oh, I love it. I like this is like a family to me that I love that the classes are small and everybody knows each other. So I love the School of Communications at TSU. It's really been like a very, very big opportunity for me. Talk about Miss Serbino Santa for Walker. Oh, yes. I'm texting her right now. <laughs> texting her right now. We talk 24 7. Everything I have to go through as far as communications, even with Miss TSU and in life, I talk to her about it. Now let's talk a little bit about you, your major and background in Texas Southern. Okay, well, my major is business management. Okay. I chose business management just because I'm real interested in the entrepreneur side. Okay. You know, when I graduate, got a couple of ideas starting. Uh, becoming Mr. Texas Southern University was just more so helping me step up in a leadership position. You know, entrepreneurship, you got to be confident. You know, I wanted to make a change for my campus, and I'm just really excited about the year. Now, here's a name for you that you got to talk about when you talk about Mr. and Miss TSU. Mr. John Rutley. I know you guys know who that is. Talk about him and what does he mean to the university? He stops me all the time. I met him my freshman year and it's been awesome. Um, I go with him like on every presidential bus tour and we go to different uh, high schools and things like that. So he's really, really awesome. I love him. Rutley? Uh, Mr. Rutley, he's pretty good. Like, real about the rules, about, you know, encouragement. He's helped me a lot along the way. We need to you know, stop throwing these He always now. gives me some encouragement words. Just helping me out, definitely. Never calls me by my first name. Oh, it's always uh, baby girl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Hey, we're stepping into 2015. A big loss last week, but we could back bouncing back this week. But what's the campus like? What's the yard what's like? The what type of things do you all have coming up on the yard this year? Um, it's really different now. So it's not how it used to be, I will say that, but um, my plan is to get the freshmen involved because okay. once the senior class leaves, we, uh, we have only the freshmen left. So I'm right now going into the dorm, talking to them, going in the near, going in the courtyard, going to all the two. Those things. names bring back memories. Yeah, so <laughs> talking to them mostly. Well, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with us, Mr. and Miss TSU, Miss Channing Briggs, and Mr. Brian Eastman. Back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Nick. Well-spoken representatives of the school. TSU had a touchdown called back, offsetting penalties. Malik Cross did not get a score. See if TSU can cash in. Hertz will just take off and run, bounce outside, cut back in, and then stay on his feet into the end zone, and TSU has passed the 50-point plateau. Avion Hurts. He takes this one. He's running all the way. Rashad Burney in the game for the first time tonight. He made a nice block on the outside to help him get around, and nobody even tackled the quarterback. So uh, good job, and he's still being coached up by Coach John Shannon on the sideline. Eric Medina's been a busy man. Pounds another one into the net, 56-0 TSU inside five minutes to play, and the Tigers ready to snap this losing streak. Remember last year, they were 5-1, and one, and they were in great position to keep winning games, Butch, even though they weren't eligible to compete for the SWAC tournament. But uh, that losing streak carried into this year. They're about to end it tonight. We'll come back, finish off this game, 56-0 TSU. Percy Crusoe. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchies. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken. 
where the taste lasts forever. Think. Question. Cut. Compare. Learn something new. Debunk something old. Hit a wall. And think again. Model. Plan. Spin. Discard. Now breathe. And keep going. Work till it's late. Then early. Then late again. Smile. Laugh. Rest. Regroup. Use technology. Use your hands. Use everything you've got. That's what it takes. Eight touchdowns tonight for the Tigers, put up a 56-0 lead, and which before we went to break, I talked about how last year this team started 5-1, but they knew they weren't able to compete or have a chance to be in that SWAC championship game, which is held across town at NRG Stadium, home of the Texans. This year it'll be on December 5th. No longer are they handcuffed by those situations, and I know they lost their first game, a conference game, but it does give these kids an extra incentive to play for that they didn't have last year. And it's, and it's wide open. It's a wide open race. You don't like to start the conference race off with a loss, but you never know what's going to happen. It's a competitive conference. Nobody's probably going to go through undefeated, so they're going to have some opportunities. Chance for the Warriors on a return. That's Everett Davis. He's going from one side of the field to the other, but I'm not sure he advanced any positive yards. Before Dondre Dobbins took him down, another helmet came flying off and Here's his previous drive. Here's another big scoring drive that took a lot of plays. <laughs> Two plays and 10 yards before Avion Hurts takes it in for the touchdown. You mentioned you saw Rashad Bernie with his first carry of the game on that. That was one of the two plays. You know, it's funny. There was two plays officially, but there felt like there were five because there were at least multiple penalties. Yeah. There was two or three penalties, penalties on that drive. That negated the play in the sequence. Seward has been in there throughout. This young man has been a tough kid. He's gained a lot of experience. Different tailback now in this lineup for the Warriors. And a chance on the ground to carry the football for Austin McGee out of Stillwell, Oklahoma. Austin McGee getting his first carry of the night. And Cecil Turner there defensively for the Tigers. See, Austin McGee wanted to hit that up on the right side, but he had no place to go. It was all maroon and gray. So he cut it back, and he cut it right back into Cecil Turner. There was just, there's just nowhere to go. But, uh, you know, you can tell they're kind of just running this thing out right now. Turner, a redshirt freshman right here in Houston, Chavez High School. Loss of one on that previous play. And that play going nowhere. Hey, it's time for our A Rocket Movers presents Do You Know TSU? And how many sports teams does TSU have? And our options tonight, 12, 13, or 14. We'll give you some time. Not a lot of time because we're running out of time, but we'll give you the answer here in a moment. I should know that. I was at a press conference when Dr. Rudley was asked that question. And uh, so I heard it. So I'm not going to tell. <laughs> <laughs> We'll give you the answer after this play. It's a third and 13 situation for Trey Seward and company. Clock nearing the three minute mark in the game. Another running play and this will not be good enough and it'll be fourth down. And let's give you our A Rocket Movers Do You Know TSU answer. Of course, how many sports teams does TSU have? And the answer is 14. Men's baseball, basketball, cross country, football, of course, golf, track and field. And then for the women, they have basketball, bowling, cross country, golf, soccer, softball, track and field, and volleyball. So I didn't do the math, but I'll, I'll take their word for it. 14 teams. I don't know about you, but anytime well, I get a chance to see Mike Davis's basketball team play, I get over yeah. there to HP&E. They had quite a season last year, and he's got some starters back, so they, they should be pretty good this year. 
The third time that Bacon can't get a punt off, but the play may have been blown dead. There were multiple flags in the backfield. Two times the punter, Blake Pierce, has had to eat it instead of kicking it. This time he went ahead and kicked the football into a Tiger. See what the penalty's Constitution about. Constitution infraction, 12 men on the field. Man. Offense, the penalties decline. It's going to be first down, TSU. Bush, they've got to get that cleaned up. They've not had a single punt play where there's not been an issue with the personnel. They have not been able to go onto the field, line up, snap the ball, and punt the football away. I'm going to buy him one of those mats that has the numbers on the sidelines, 1 through 11, where everybody stands on before they run onto the field before a kickoff or a punt. If, if they had a special teams coach, he'd be in trouble tonight. But... This is the third time TSU has taken over inside the Bacon 10-yard line after a botched or blocked punt. That's incredible. And it's a case where the Tigers would probably be content to kind of run out the clock themselves, but the field position has been such where they've been immediately in scoring position. Matthew Butler looking for the left sideline, and he's ridden out. A couple of yards shy of the goal line. And you see that clock still rolling. We played 10 minute quarters in the second half. We went to the break at 35 nothing. A couple of the Warriors dinged up pretty good in the first half, so we played 10 minute quarters, basically a rolling clock with the exception of incomplete passes or changes of possession or scores. And we had that long delay because of the injury. And we that, did. That really kind of set things back. It deflated things for the visitors from Muskegee, Oklahoma. Five-yard penalty, still second down. That's Matthew Butler in as the running back in this formation. The referee, Scott Johnson, has gotten a lot of air time tonight. I mean, he's <laughs> when you know the referee's name, there's been a lot of flags in this game. And he has not lost his voice either. He's had a big role in our telecast this evening. High snap. This is a chance for Bernie. And he falls shy of the goal line. Bernie had five carries for six yards last week. And the playing time... Early in this game went to Daryl Robinson. We saw a little bit of Matthew Butler, and now Bernie getting his shot. Bernie actually started the game last week, and, you know, I mentioned before, there really wasn't much of an opportunity to run the ball after halftime because the, the situation changed so much. So he's getting a look here in the second half. This time it's Butler. He wants that touchdown. He will be stopped. And again, it was Eric Brown, the young man, the freshman out of Houston, has had a tremendous game from his safety position. It's been one of the bright spots for the Warriors. But it's now second and goal from the two as we near the one-minute mark. Next week, TSU will be at Arkansas Pine Bluff, back in conference action. Back-to-back -back weeks, they'll be on the road. Then Jackson State on the 26th. Come out. Bacon. Bacon calls First timeout, charge, and time uh, out there's the your half. next home game. And Butch, that's a Thursday night game. Thursday night game, TSU versus Alabama State, October 1st. Kind of an early kickoff, 6.30. That's, hey. that's a couple weeks from now, so the weather should be pretty nice. Well, it should be ideal, a nationally televised game, a Thursday night contest against Alabama State, a SWAC primetime contest. And We'll see how the Tigers advance over these next two weeks before they get home because a couple of road games in conference play. And, and that's crucial because it's always tough when you go on the road, especially in, in conference play. If you can get a win on the road, that is huge. That is huge because you're expected to come back and take care of your business at home. So when you can go and steal one on the, on, on the road, that's just putting you yourself in, in better position. That would be such a huge boost for this program to be able to get a win next week. That'd be great. It'd be, it'd be tremendous. And hopefully some of that momentum we're seeing tonight will, will carry over because they have executed well offensively and defensively. Monty Coleman, the coach of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Distinguished NFL career. Meanwhile, Hertz brings the offense back out after the timeout. Second and goal from the two. They're going to try to get Rashad Bernie a touchdown. 
Tigers have scored eight touchdowns tonight. And he got it. Updating, the Tigers <laughs> have scored nine <laughs> touchdowns tonight. Rashad Bernie powers his way in for the touchdown. I, I know going to watch the Tigers uh, during their training camp, uh, Coach Asbury was really high on this young man, and I don't think you can draw too much into it uh, just because he didn't start tonight. He's going to be in the mix before the season is over with. He's got a lot of talent. He's also another tough runner. He just bulled his way in right there for that touchdown. Big, strong, physical running back. Ninth extra point try from Medina. Wearing out the nets behind the uprights here at BBVA Compass. 49 seconds remain in this contest before the Tigers get their first win of the season. They'll be able to enjoy a college football Saturday at home after a little shorter week after playing late Saturday night, the 8 o'clock kick in the Labor Day Classic. Very late, but you, you know what? It, it, it was a short week, and I said it before. It was also a long week because when you lose a game to your rivals like that, you want to get back out there and get that taste out of your mouth. And I'm sure these guys couldn't wait to play tonight. Tonight's game couldn't come soon enough. And they've got 63 points on the board. Lamar put 66 on the board last week, so they got three more to go. You wish the best for Bacon. I know they've had some uh, injuries tonight, one of the serious nature. And these two games have not been a lot of fun for the Warriors. And hopefully once they get in league play where they have been picked to finish third in a seven-team league, they'll be able to find some success and benefit from what has been a couple of games where they've been beaten up pretty good. The freshman Jeremy Barnes left with that serious injury. They weren't sure whether it was a concussion or not. So we still wish him the best. And and hopefully he'll make a full recovery. But it's been a tough night for them. I mean, it, it really has. Uh, they came in here and they played hard, but TSU was just bigger, stronger, faster, any way you want to cut it, uh, and they executed well. So when you execute and you're bigger, stronger, faster, some good things are going to happen for you. And they certainly have tonight. Adonis Porter on the kickoff return for the Warriors. He's running the wrong way and tackled just outside the... 10-yard line, and maybe a chance for a play or two for the Warriors before we can wrap this one up. Pretty good special teams play. Tigers not quitting. Darian Thiel from Klein Forest made that stop and here's a young man in Trey Seward I really think he's benefited from the experience tonight but I got a feeling he's ready for this game to be over oh I, I'm sure he is but when you go back to the first quarter and you look at how they started the game they had a nice little offensive rhythm going and they moved the football a little bit it's just when you're giving up that much size it's, it's kind of hard to maintain that so it looks like the Warriors content to run out the clock with another carry from Roderick Mackey but you're right they'll be happy to get the heck out of Texas Put that in the rearview mirror real quick. Joshua Brooks made the stop. A lot of smiles on the Tiger sideline tonight. Ready to snap this losing skid, get their first win of the year, even their record at one and one. Some handshakes. Coach Daryl Asbury congratulating the players. Uh, Coach Heisman Northern still coaching his defense out there. He's still yelling instructions. Uh, and that's probably because he's got some young guys that are not used to being in there, trying to make sure that they're lined up correctly. And the Warriors content to let the clock wind down, and that will do it. The final, the Texas Southern Tigers get their first win of the year. They defeat the Bacon Warriors 63 to nothing. We'll step aside and come back and wrap things up in a moment. Smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation 
making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Make the right moves. A rocket moving. You need to call the people who always do it right. And work hard day and night. To make the right moves. You need people who care. People who make This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation. Making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Sixty-three to nothing. The TSU Tigers with the win tonight over Bay Cohen College. Again, I'm Brett Tolden, which put also door, and uh, the numbers are pretty staggering all the way around, offensively, defensively, and certainly the final score. Well, any way you cut it, the TSU Tigers were bigger, stronger, and faster tonight, and it showed out on the field, but they really needed a game like this. They needed a game where they could come out and everything they executed work, where you could score that many touchdowns, when you could get some of that momentum building up and hopefully carry some of that into next week. Let's take a look at those final stats tonight, and you see the score, of course, but a very good balance in the first half between rushing and passing with the game out of hand. The rushing numbers picked up, but uh, even the defensive numbers impressive. Very impressive. And, and last week, they did not get to work on the running game as much as they did tonight. That's why you see that big number, 272 yards. I'm sure they wanted to run the ball more last week, but there wasn't an opportunity because of the game flow. It just didn't have a chance to run it that much. One of the big guys involved with uh, Jonathan Bowen, the quarterback who did it through the air and on the ground, and I believe Nick Strong is standing by with the QB. Going into Pine Bluff. Uh, we just gotta, you know, stick to our game plan, work as hard as we can, and shoot. I mean, we'll just get the win. Good luck going into Pine Bluff next week. All right, back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Nick. Jonathan Bowen was our player of the game, and again, uh, he just commanded this offense tonight. He had a couple of early scoring touchdowns, and we'll take a look at them in a second, but. He just led the charge and, and made very few mistakes tonight. He came out and he was very poised. And you could tell he learned a lot from last week. He was a more confident quarterback this weekend. That makes all the difference in the rope world. He was throwing the ball deep. He was throwing the ball over the middle. And his decisions when he was running the football were excellent. Let's take a look at some of our highlights from tonight's game, a 63 to nothing TSU win. And a lot of different players were involved. You'll see different guys getting some opportunities. There's Darrell Robinson right there taking the handoff. He got a chance to play a lot tonight. He didn't disappoint. We talked about Bowen being the player of the game. He keeps right up the middle and right here again off the zone read. Bowen keeps and he's in for the touchdown. One of three he would score on the ground. Just a huge, huge game. There's Robinson again. That running game we mentioned. 272 yards on the ground. So, And then what about the defense? Homer Causey was a quarterback last year. Now he's a defensive back, really doing a great job. Dondre Dobbins was looking at six. <laughs> the ball goes right off his hands there. He almost got it. 
And Avion Hurts on the keeper behind Rashad Burney takes it in for the touchdown. Tigers win at 63 nothing. So for Butch Olsen, or Nick Strong, and our entire crew, I'm Brett Dolan saying good night from BBVA Compass Stadium. The Tigers get the win, their first of the season, 63 to nothing.